said adios Back with a vengeance, back on the grinds, back to the business. Hey, God is my witness, they watching my moves like shows they binging. Hey, best keep distance, all of my haters send best of wishes. I get to the bag with the quickness, no, I don't need no assistance. No. Yeah, no playing it safe. I said, let's get it, you say not today. What can I say? If you ain't gonna go for it, get out the way. Yeah, got no time to waste. Can't be with me if you're not at my pace. You're not at my level, you're not in my race. One foot on the gas, I'm yeah. pushing the brakes. There's no recital, I'm killing competition, ain't no revival I shoot it to kill it, I'm aiming for vitals I'm showing no mercy when facing my rivals I'm facing the crash, they're getting exposed I know they be lurking, I'm watching them close Acting like friends, but really they foes So they be scheming and said adios Get it on my seat. The corner of 16th Street in Georgetown, 400 plus thousand seats every last weekend in May. Indianapolis comes alive and hosts one of the biggest events, not only in the motorsports world, in the world period. Here today on iRacing, we welcome you once again for the 13th time to the iRacing's version of the Indianapolis 500. That same two and a half mile track has placed host to this event for over a decade. And today we are going to see who will carve themselves into iRacing history. I said a moment ago it's been the corner of 16th Street in Georgetown. But hey, this place has been called Traino Town for the last three years because he has won 
this race for the last three years in a row. My name is Will Vincent, joined by Arjuna Kankapati and Lewis McGlade. Live timing is available at racebots.wtf forward slash indie. And well, I'm wearing myself a 2014 Indianapolis. That's the first time I went to the Indianapolis Man Speed. Well, I'll take that one up in a moment. I'm joined by Arjuna. I'm joined by Lewis, both BCO Swimming Award winning. And look at me, the idiot in a cap on the left hand side. Hi, Arjuna. Hello. Well, you say the idiot in the cap, the man who's commentated on more of these iRacing Indianapolis 500s than anyone. We missed you last year, Will. We had some fun, but it was a great race, and I can't wait to do it again. You say it's Traino Town. He looks to become Mr. Four Time, but the competition has never been this stiff, with Team Talent slash the private label team hype really coming out swinging in qualifying. But qualifying is one thing, the race set up a totally different ballgame. The qualifying Lewis, 16 corners separated at the very, very top by one one thousandth of a second. It was mighty close. It came down to Friday night, but Trino will not be starting on pole position. I mean, me and uh, our junior have discussed time and time again about how this is one of the hardest locations to qualify at. The idea that even the slightest mistake, one millimetre, can make all of the difference. It is such an insanely uh, difficult run. And the fact that Phil Krause has it by one thousandth of a second shows just how quick that kid is. The qualifying order, you can see, running along the bottom of your screen, by the way. And Arjuna, it's been mighty close up and down through the field. We talked about an hour ago about how this is one of the most difficult challenges in all of our racing. We think that it was the 39th fastest driver that managed to make this race. That's in line with what we've had most years. And this is one of the most nerve wracking moments of any sim racer's career. Did I make split number one? or am I in split two? Correct myself, because I'm the one that told you it was 39th. The 40th position has made it in. A couple of drivers going for qualifying who knew they weren't going to be racing. It means that those who were on the bubble had a very stressful night as they contemplated which race that they were going to be in. But ultimately, we're here today, and I was watching the inaugural episode of RaceBot Talks and listening to some of the points. And I'll just point out, uh, someone made the comment that IndyCar drivers are not adaptable. You look at two of the finest that the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup has to offer, Zach Campbell and Kevin Ellis Jr. Both of them started here in the iRacing world in Indy cars. Kevin Ellis Jr., an Indy fix guy before the Apex Racing team picked him up. Yeah, indeed so. Actually, it was great to talk to Kevin Ellis Jr. a couple of weeks ago as well. Let's have a look then at this. It's the 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500. It's been a part of the World Tour of Special Events. Call it what you want since 2010. We got five days to set your qualifying. And as I said, it is a four lap average qualifying. It's the only time we do that on iRacing this year. Just over a tenth of a second separates your top 50. Pole position, never won the beach race. Lewis, that's interesting. Trainer is starting in P2. He might be happy with his qualifying position. Well, it's where Brandon Trano started back in 2021 as well, when he went on uh, to go and take victory. It's kind of one of those things when I was looking through some of the, the results and stats and stuff that pole position is almost a bit of a bad luck charm. Uh, Brandon Trano had it twice in 2016 and 2017, and guess what? He didn't win either of those. Could have made it five uh, on the bounce, but obviously that was thinking of a very, very long time ago. Um, we always expect a tight finish. We know that when it comes to oval races, the Indy 500 is almost more of a, an endurance race in a sense you've got to play the very very long game yeah you do and we're going to see about 30 to 40 split of racing don't forget of course we had the fixed i racing indy 500 that took place a week ago and that means more people are participating in this race than ever before 2021 champion we talked about that one already let's have a look then at the history let's have a look at pole position Let's have a look at the winners. We started with Justin Dalsan in 2010, and then for a couple of years, it was a Tim Doyle and Young O show. O second to Doyle in 2011. He took victory in 2012. Tim Doyle was second. Brody Kostecki getting Broken Arrow's first victory in 2013. Then it went to Tim Holgate, Cam Stark, Matt Pavelski, Christopher DeMera, and Joshua Chin, who can forget Chin's emphatic victory in 2018. But since then, We've had many people say pole position. Marco Brazil, Young O, and Michele Constantini. But Brandon Traino, he has been the victor each of those times. Can Philip Krause become the first driver 
to win the iRacing Indy 500 from pole position. Arjuna, on one hand, it can be a blessing. That first caution comes out at the wrong time. Everyone can go on towards pit road and leave you on the track by yourself. It's a difficult spot to be in, but with the type of racing that we expect to see, by no means can you count out pole position with a track position advantage. One other thing to note when it comes to, you know, talking uh, about history books, Will, is the fact that technically the overall pole position winner has never won this race. We've seen on a couple of occasions, for example, Yang Oh, uh, yeah. qualifying on pole, then doesn't even race in the actual main event. So that's where we talk about that. However, Christopher Demer in 2017, he was the driver that started on pole position because I I think Brandon Traino missed out. Christopher Demerit always likes to point that one out. He won from pole position. <laughs> yeah, he did. And of course, a big thing to note about that one. Qualifying takes place over five days, as we mentioned. We have four races that take place. The first one of them took place yesterday. And I can't remember who won it, Lewis. I I'm sure it's a name that sounds familiar to me. A Brandon Tretch, something like that. Uh, no, I've never heard of him. Don't know who you're talking about. Couldn't, couldn't imagine uh, Mr. Mr. Indy himself. Obviously, Brandon Traino is incredibly fast. We're getting plenty uh, of practice in and building his way up, of course, to the main event. And what better way to practice than to just do it? Yeah, and we are getting to the point now where we are going to start our pre-race ceremonies. And Arjuna, you're going to the Indy 500 this year. I have been four times. People say if you're not in the track by 11, you're missing out actually on the second most important thing of the Indy 500 pre-race festivities. We've got the anthem coming up. The American National Anthem there, ringing out at the virtual Indianapolis Murder Speedway. And as I said, Arjuna, I'm sure you can't wait for all the pre-race festivities coming up when you head yourself to Indy in a week's time. Absolutely. And I think as part of that, of course, it's time for us to break out the old gym neighbors. It's time for Back Home Again in Indiana. Back home again in Indiana, and it seems that I can see the gleaming candlelight still burning bright through the sycamores for me. The new moon hay. I dream about the moonlight on the Wabash, how I long for my Indiana home. 
Our good friend, Mr. Jim Neighbours, who also got to give the starting command for this race a couple of years ago. And this year, to give our starting command is the man who was involved in the first ever broadcast on Racebot TV, who now has the privilege of being one of the flagmen for the Entity Data IndyCar Series, Aaron Likens. It is such an honor to be asked to give the command today. It does feel a bit weird not being part of the broadcast and not giving my annual call of, well, it's never too early to start talking about fuel numbers. But I definitely like where I am today. Anyway, it's about that time. Drivers, start your engines. And with that, let's start having a look at the starting grid for this 2022 iRacing Indianapolis 500 with Philip Krause for private label Team Hype on pole position. Brandon Traino for Apex Racing Team with i5G, one one thousandth of a second back. Michelle Constantini, third place. Jason Brophy in P4, Connor Harrington in P5, and Jeff Drake rounds out your top six, Lewis. Yeah, Jacob Oster and then Valtteri Alanta, Mr. ISOWC, the champion there, starts from eighth with Alexis Newsom. Josh Chin, a previous winner at this race with Brandon Lichtenberg and Christian Steele in 12th. 13th place is Hugo Olsen for Power Slide Motorsports. Matt Pavelski alongside him on that seventh row of the grid. Henry Bennett and Carl Janssen on row number eight. And then we've got Austin Espati and Robert Melkser, who came second in the fixed race last week. He is in 18th place, Arjuna. Yeah, then Andreas Eich rolls off from 19th, along with Daniel Ziegers in the 31 for Team Talent, who have really stormed the field with the amount of cars entered. Alexander van der Sat, what a run it was for him. He was the one who finished in second, excuse me, Will, That's in that fixed 500, losing out on the final lap to Casey Curran. He's here for redemption. He'll be alongside Chan Simpson leading the satellite racing charge. Rodrigo Franzoni and Will Lyon complete the top 24. Moving back then, P number 25, he's been on pole position for this race before. Marco Aurelia Brazil, Jasper Orman for the Indy Alliance Racing in P26, Andrea Piero in P27, Fernando Borda in 28, Rob Powers in P number 29, and then Lewis, David Porcelli is in 30th. Yeah, just three more cars, of course. It's Thomas Christensen and then Alexander Russell. AJ Musselman starts from 33rd and last on the grid. It's always worth noting that back at Indy, they used to have a little breakfast for those drivers starting on the last row of the grid, because they knew how much work it would take for them to move themselves up through the field. Well, once again, welcome to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. For the 13th time, welcome to the iRacing Indianapolis 500 special event. Get yourself some water, get yourself some snacks. It's going to be two and a half to three hours worth of racing. And it is about to kick off. Pole position for the number nine car. Going to pick up the pace. And the 13th annual iRacing Indianapolis 500 is underway. First question on anyone's mind is, are you going to survive lap number one? Well, they're going to go three wide for first place on lap number one here. Absolutely incredible racing to kick off the 2022 iRacing Indianapolis 500. That ticker will run along the left-hand side of your screen in a moment. And, well, look at that. Who is in first place after the first lap here of this track? It's no one else than Brandon Traino. Arjuna, he's got the absolute perfect start. And it's crucial with the amount of dirty air that these guys are having to deal with that they control the pace of the race. Crucially, though, Traino, I talked to him last night. The goal was for him and Michele Costantini to get to the front, to leapfrog in front of Phil Krause. Look how tight it was, though, on the run to turn three. Jason Brophy on the offense. Indeed so. So it's Traino from Krause and Constantini, Brophy, Harrington and Drake. Jeff Drake 
He's always been good at this race. He's hoping to get himself a top three, maybe even, of course, a win. Constantini up into second, looking down to the inside of Brandon Trano as they come towards turn number one. Now, here's the important thing to note, Lewis. We are not going to hype up every single pass in this race because some of it is done deliberately and strategically to be faster than just sitting in line as Trano is doing exactly what I'm talking about into turn three. Oh yeah, you know uh, Arjuna knows that I love talking about cycling when it comes to motorsport and this is the perfect example of that in a team time trial. You don't want the same dude sitting at the front, you've got to keep changing. You've got to keep moving people from the front. It's exactly what happens here. The leader is only going at a certain speed. Meanwhile, if you can slipstream past, that's where the extra speed comes from. Look at this, three wide down at T1. And that is oh! going to be the big issue. And Trano will not win the 2022 race. We're going to get ourselves a new winner. Calamity, three wide, lap four of the race. And I I would probably be able to decipher what Trano is saying right now, and they are not words that I can repeat on a broadcast. That is, wow. well, I don't want to be too harsh for Phil Krause, a man on a roll in the Lionheart IndyCar Series. Seven races in, he's won all but one, and that one odd mark, well, it's second place. He has been the man to challenge Adam Blocker. You knew he wanted to get in front of the Apex Racing Team, Geo, but three wide into turn one is asking for trouble, and Phil Krause has taken out not one, but two Apex Racing Team machines. The next word out of my mouth was going to be that Krause would want to get ahead of these two because they are teammates. Here's the replay, Lewis, into one. Oh. Yes, it's not, it's not an easy one. Now, I will say, uh, actually, uh, I did hear what Brandon Traino was saying. It wasn't actually as bad as you think. He was basically just reiterating the point that it was lap four and a three wide move to T1 potentially wasn't the widest. I don't know how I feel. I think the T did come down just no, the, no, fair enough, there was a bit of air there, but uh, Phil Kraus, either way, making it three wide down to T1. You could argue maybe it wasn't really the time to try and make it three wide into the first corner. Uh, and either way, both the apex cars in the front are done. Yeah, there's the super slow-mo, there's the air. I would say that Kraus, the way he was on the inside line, he could have been a little bit lower down. We yeah. are talking inches. This is a race of inches. Anyone who's seen anyone turn a lap around here knows that this is a race of inches. Yes, it was lap number four. My next point, Arjuna, was if you're racing two teammates, they are going to work together. You are always going to be on the outside having to try and basically keep up with them, etc. So, yes, it was lap four, but also it's lap four of a motor race. It's, it's, it's going to be controversial. This will go on way beyond our, our webcast here today. But, well, that's changed the entire complexity of this race. Well, uh, I, there was drama between these two teams last year. There's going to be more drama between them now. That's all I'll say. I'll leave it at that. I'm sure I'm going to get some messages post-race from the private label team hype about how uh, I was being harsh on Phil Kraus, but three wide, lap four. Yes, it's a motor race. It's a race. It's an endurance race, though. We talked about this in the Fix 500 last week. You've got to be careful. You've got to make sure you stay out of trouble. Yeah, indeed. And you know what? We're not here to win people's hearts. We're here to commentate a race. That's what we allegedly get paid to do. And that is what we're going to carry on doing here today. So let's reset the field. Let's take a deep breath, shall we? Because it is Phil Kraus. He does lead away. Jason Bro3, P2. Connor Harrington, P3. Jeff Drake, P4. Alexis Newsom in fifth place. On pit road and or out of this race, we have got Michelle Constantini. Brandon Trano, Rodrigo Ferranti and Rob Powers are uh, still on pit road. I believe they might be coming back out. We need to keep an eye out on that one. But the big news is two drivers out. Lights are still on top of the iRacing safety car, Lewis. Yeah, uh, obviously it'll be out for a little while, but some are using this time to get into the pit lane to obviously stick a little extra fuel in to help things out uh, a bit later on. One of those was Andreas Ike, who did lose a little bit of time uh, in pit lane by completely missing his box, which is a very solid F in a time like this. Uh, Van der Sant also uh, came down into pit road as well for a little bit extra fuel. Uh, kind of makes sense. If you're down like you know, sort of 20th to 30th uh, at this point in the race, 
I would absolutely come in because you've not made that much progress at the start. Come in, get that extra fuel, and let's start strategizing. If you remember the, the starting command by Aaron, Aaron Lake, he said that it's never too early to start thinking about fuel mileage. Um, first of all, apologies to Alexander van der Sand. Um, it was actually my pick last week. Um, he was um, Robert Meltzer. Um, so that's the reason why he was in my brain, Arjuna. But Alexander van der Sand was one of those people that went onto an alternate strategy. Many people went onto an alternate strategy a week ago in the I racing fixed Indianapolis 500. Four or five laps in, at the end of the race, if you've got yourself that extra margin and the late caution comes out the way it does, you have to start building it now. You have to start strategizing all the way through this race, knowing that the rewards might not come until lap number 196. Yeah, and I think the important thing here as well, you basically got a private label team height slash team talent, one, two, three, and four. They'll be able to control the tempo. We saw that the third car in line was able to get a run. Jason Brophy had lost out quite considerably on that run down into turn number one. So for, for those teams, for the almost... Uh, 10 plus cars that they've got entered they're looking good should also be noted when it goes to now the apex racing team alliance with team i5g they came into this race with only five or six cars you know out on track two of them are already lost you need teammates you need friends in this race it becomes a much different task for the likes of alexis newsom jacob oster sitting in fifth and sixth positions yeah, indeed. And some of that will be Country Alliance down the field as well. Let's just run through your track conditions because we didn't do so earlier on. It is 78 degrees track temperature. Actually, it's a little bit different today. It's um, 55 degrees track temperature. It is 26 degrees in the air. 55% race relative humidity. Two mile an hour winds to the north. And it's partially cloudy. And our date and time, well, that's set for next week when the big dance happens in Indiana. So, we are ready for our first restart of the day. Single file restarts will be the case all day long. The field will pick up to pace at any moment. We're going to go back to green flag racing here as we start lap number eight of 200. And we see already the team talent drivers, they're going to be doing the same work we saw Apex and others doing at the start of this race. They're going to be swapping around, especially as they come onto this back stretch. We haven't talked about restarts yet, Arjuna. Restarts will be key. Also, when the leader goes, that will also be key in this race. Yeah, and it's something if we get a last lap shootout like we've had a, a couple of years before, that you have to time it very, very well. I talked to the, uh, about that with Brandon Trainer yesterday in our qualifying special. We watched basically all the finishes from 2016 on forward and how they had developed. Timing the, the restart is going to be important, but for now, the top three trying to swap around and, and tow each other forward. Connor Harrington in tow as well. Yeah, indeed. Apologies about that. I just had the worst cough I've ever had in a while. As Brophy leads then from Krauss, we have got one of the Apex cars out of pit road. That Traino. is Michelle. Uh, is it Brent Traino? It's it is Traino. Brent Traino. He is back out onto track. He is going down the kind of escape road through turn three and four. I'm wondering if he was just trying to see if his car is drivable. It was Zach Villeneuve who came from laps down to win the race before. It would be an almost monumental task for Brian and Traino to do so, but maybe he was just bringing that car back out to see whether or not it will drive. Looks like he's back on towards pit road, so we go to the front of your field. Jason Brophy and Krause, they go side by side, always return number two as we go on board. We've got ourselves these wonderful on board cameras. That is the number 26 car, Oster, and let's look at Jacob Oster right now as he works towards turn three, Arjuna. Yeah, we talked about this last week, right? The uh, evolution of Jacob Oster running as a member of Total Downforce Racing in 2021. A, a real thrash in the final uh, week to get the qualifying setup ready. Uh, only did about 40 laps of practice, smacks the wall during his first ever uh, feature race appearance at the iRacing Indianapolis 500. Now part of Team i5G, the hopes very much rest on him and Alexis Newsom's shoulders to try and work their way forward. But you can see the gap that's already formed to the top Three. Jeff Drake, uh, somewhat of a parachute, uh, holding back Newsom Osser and even Valtteri Lander. That's a really interesting thing I see, Lewis. He's using in-air headphones um, for this race. Normally, a lot of people use your traditional gaming headsets, but actually, for a race like this, where you, you're in six gear and the engine note will change so subtly, I'd actually say in-air. I'm probably going to be a better bet here today. 
I mean, it depends on the sort of shape of your ears. I've tried racing with in-ear headphones, and it's uh, tricky when they just start slightly dropping out of my ear. I'm like, nope, get back in. Want something that's comfortable. The most important thing with a race like this is being comfortable. You need to be settled in the car, not thinking about anything else, being able to watch, because as we all know with Indianapolis, when something changes on track, it changes very, very, very quickly indeed. I mean, you're flying around a circuit like this, at, you know, not far off 2, 230 mile an hour. Uh, it's incredibly fast, and you just want to be able to be comfortable enough to react. Obviously, complacency is the enemy uh, in a race like this, but still, got to keep your eyes focused. I just noticed Robert Meltzer went purple on our timing screen, so he's got the fast stuff today. The fast stuff doesn't really matter to much, Lewis, but it can be a useful indicator as to whether a driver is getting cleaner or dirtier. Right now, Meltzer is kind of catching up to some drivers, so he could run in that dirty air. That can be really important. It's been the story of iRacing Indy 500s for years. The cars that can run by themselves and the cars that can work better in dirty air to move themselves back for the field. I remember a couple of years ago, some drivers were fine out front. As soon as they got into traffic, bam, they were back down to P20. Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, we, you know we've spoken this about most tracks where you go, you obviously got to think about how you want your car set up and stuff around Indianapolis. It's no different to that. But it, instead of it's, do you want to be going fast in the corners or on the straights, which, you know, obviously you want to be going fast in the straights, really, uh, and grippy in the corners. Basically, you want the, uh, the, the, the golden lottery ticket for everything. But you have to be thinking about whether you want your car to be, a, to be a bullet by itself or whether you want it to work through traffic, and that is not an easy judgment to make. Uh, obviously, they've got certain tools that they can use inside the car, uh, you know, weight jacks and stuff, which they can use to move things around to make things a bit more comfortable in the stint. And the drivers that are best at using those tools, those are the ones that tend to uh, glide their way through uh, a, a pack of cars. As we can see plenty of side-by-side, -side, but no real movement happening uh, when it comes to on-track passes with the exception of the race lead. Everyone's just trying to get offline and get yep. themselves their own little bit of clean air. I, I always call this first part of the race, Arjuna, the first and second date phase because you've gone out now, you got yourself onto the grid, you've done the start of the race. This is now second date territory. You've had a restart. You're on slightly older tyres. You're about halfway through a tyre stint. This is when you get the real information as to how good your car is, as to how its capabilities are and what you might need to do when you come to that first pit stop. Remember, this is also the third race of the available time slots for this iRacing Indianapolis 500. A lot of the teams, after qualifying ends on Friday evening, will do that first race where they get that first indication where other teams are with their race setups, what maybe they're lacking, and what they would might need to improve. Yes, we've had the Indy Elite Series 500 a couple of weeks ago, but it was in much cooler track conditions. It's not really a, a benchmark that you can use to see where you stack up against other teams, especially because we know sandbagging is very much a thing. But at this point, you've got your car figured out very slightly halfway through the fuel run. You now understand how difficult it's going to be to pass as well. Jacob Oster has gone and passed on Alexis Newsom, but has kind of stalled out behind Jeff Drake. Look at him as he tries to go up high through turn three, get some clean air on the nose, trying to get that move done. You can overtake on the outside at Indianapolis. You just have to make sure that your car will rotate as you head yourself into turn one or turn three. Looking on board then, down to the inside of the number 25 car is going to be Newsom, not able to do anything. Actually, that was us to take that one back. As we go back then to have a look as the drivers working themselves through turn number two onto the back straightaway. A bit of separation now coming on, about seven car lengths between third place, which is Brophy and Jeff Drake, which is in fourth. Your key situation here, Lewis, you, if this goes green to lap 36, 37, we get through to pit stop, so forget we have that caution. You want to make sure that you're realistically within five seconds of the leader. That's the key thing. If you can't do that, then you're really going to have to hope that A, cautions go your way, and B, you can adapt the car that you have, your driving style, to get back into this. You want to be within five seconds of the race leader within the next 15 laps. Yeah, you, you kind of make sure that you get that pit lane entry and exit also spot on in green. Phase. Obviously, all these guys have practiced that time and time again, but still, uh, it's one of those things that you can't uh, under think, can't under practice. We're on board with Carl Janssen. You can see, you know, normally we uh, associate Carl Janssen with the core uh, sim racing team. Obviously, departed that camp in the very recent past, uh, only to go and join Williams Esports. And I think this might be our first time seeing uh, Williams out on track. 
well, well, Carl Janssen in a Williams car uh, out on circuit, which is, uh, I mean, looks all right. Nice yeah. He does. I do like a Williams Indy car. I don't get any ideas down in Oxfordshire. Not yet. Get your Formula One team sorted <laughs> out first. Then you can come over to Indy. Uh, but yeah, Williams livery does look really nice, I have to say. Keeping an eye out on P10 right now. Christian Steele, Joshua Chin. I think they've got about eight years of running together so far over the years. Arjuna said these two know each other inside out. They've been on the same team before. They've been against each other in years past. These two, I think, there's going to be a group of people to start working themselves through to the front of the field. I think it's going to start around Olsen Steel, and it's going to be bringing the likes of Bennett, Malatska, Pavelski, SPT along with them. You saw as well that Hugo Olsen playing the team game, giving some draft to the Brit Henry Bennett to get on past, or have a look, I should say, on Joshua Chin, but that move not forthcoming. I mean, it, it's a community which has so much history behind it. By far, this is the sim racing event on iRacing that has got the most history behind it. Nowhere else would someone like Tanner Watkins produce, um, I think it was 80 or 90 page media oh, booklet, word, yeah. a, a PDF full of data on, on all the races, and not just these top split ones, but all the different splits that we have, because as John Heindorf likes to say a lot, it doesn't matter which race you're in, a win is a win. You get to experience the thrill of crossing the yard of bricks, celebrating with a glass of milk. The reality is though, for these teams, for these drivers, so much effort, so much focus goes on this particular race. It's why the tension is so high. It's why the tantrums sometimes get thrown out. Uh, <laughs> Traino mentioned yesterday, they've been building their qualifying setup since March of this year. Yeah, I can imagine that. And I know stories of people in years gone by that either A, prepared for this run race only, or they are turning two, three, four thousand laps around this place just to nail down that last tenth, last hundredth, last thousandth of a second. There is Brandon Traino in 32nd place. So he has won the last three races in a row, but he's not taking any further part for the time being in this race. Nice appetizing label, Dr. Pepper. We love Dr. Pepper, much better than Coca-Cola. Um, you can sponsor us, it's okay. Krauss leading the way as we are on lap number 22 of 200 here. So one tenth race distance is now complete. And I, I do have to say the history, everything about this race, Lewis, so 800, 871, it was my last check, qualified for this race. Not all of them are gonna be racing today, in this race but you've got to remember that this is one of those races where also you can not turn a qualifying time you can go and join this race and you're racing with people with a similar skill level to you and for many people it's about the same endurance mindset you talk about survive 500 miles keep the car clean maybe drink some milk at the end well, I mean, everyone's uh, here with the same goal, whether it's in this split or any other split. Uh, you all want to take part, you all want to win, you all want to, say, cross the, the line of bricks first, uh, some of which Brandon Traino does know plenty about. And, uh, well, I think we're actually joined uh, by Brandon Traino at the moment. Indeed we have. So, Brandon, out early, out lap number four of this race. Talk us through it. You've got to be gutted after winning this race the last three years in a row. Yeah, it's uh, it sucks. You know, plain and simple. It's uh, it's really unfortunate to get raced like that. Uh, it's just kind of how that team is, right? It's it's lap four of a 200 mile, 200 lap race, and we're we're out here throwing haymakers on on lap four, and it's just unnecessary and uncalled for. But we we expected it, and obviously you can't avoid some of the idiots that are in this race. And, you know, it is what it is. Moving forward, we know you put your heart and soul into this. There's still one more. By the way, congratulations on winning an Indy 500, of course, already this weekend. But what's your plan to the rest of this weekend? What's the rest of your plans for the month of May? Yeah, so uh, like you said, we won last night, which was really good. We had a really good battle with uh, Maletsker from Power Slide. And it's uh, seven total wins for me in the top split, which is something nobody's ever really done. And, you know, I really wanted this one just to solidify the history I have with this race and, and put that record out of reach further for for years to come. But uh, the goal here is to get uh, Jacob, Brendan, Matt, and Alexis and Steele uh, ahead, of, ahead of these guys and hopefully get them to win here for us. Well, it's going to be Dr. Pepper, not milk for you today, unfortunately. But thank you for talking to us, Brandon. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Lap number 26. 
It's a bit weird to us to have interviews this early on, Arjuna, but Arjuna, um, uh, Brandon is a special case, shall we say, winning this race three years in a row. It would have been sad not to talk to him at all. You can also hear the frustration, right, with yeah. the, how he feels like he was raced. I still, I've, I've seen a lot of chit-chat about the move in, in the chat, you know, half thinking the Apex cars could have backed out, half thinking that uh, Phil Kraus could have been a little bit more tentative on that for the race. The reality is only two people's opinions that really matter are Kraus's and Trainos. They'll have a talk after this race, I have no doubt about that, but Traino clearly not happy. Let's see how that conversation goes post-race. It's frustrating to say the very least, but I loved hearing that, you know, now he's out the race. He's still focused on helping his teammates, trying to make sure that uh, one of Newsom Oster, uh, Lichtenberg, Steele, any of them can work their way forward. In years gone by, there used to be a little meetup taking place in a, in a small random bar in Indianapolis that really easily could have sorted that situation out once and for all, Lewis. I always say, sim racers, they argue, they complain, they sometimes even hate each other as we look at the battle for P number five. Get them into a room, get them having a talk, even a little drink inside them. All of a sudden, even the worst enemies can sometimes become friends. Oh, I don't know. I still think I'd hate Arjuna in person, but we'll, uh, we'll roll over that one. <laughs> no, of course, you're absolutely right. Once you, uh, once you start meeting other people, I've, I've met with my fair few uh, sim racers over the last sort of five years, and uh, most of them, there's about some very specific <laughs> exceptions, we won't go into that too much, most of them are actually very nice. You know, just regular people that want to do it. The thing is, when you're fiercely competing on grids like this, Sometimes you, you, you just become bitter rivals with someone just based on what's happened on track. It's no disrespect to them as a, as a person, as a human being. It's just, it's always them. You're always racing them, uh, battling out hard. I mean, it, it is what it is. That is racing. It's the same in the motorsports world. It's the same in sim racing. Uh, yeah, sometimes you just got to go making it 3 5. It was a bit early uh, from Phil Krauss in my book. But. You know, uh, I was told, well, we all heard once that it's a motor race and we've gone motor racing. Yeah. Um, Brandon Lichtenberg is in this race. And thank you very much for making your bet. Is that a cat underneath the draw? I do not know. But Harrington leads this race. Lichtenberg right now is in P number eight. He is behind Valtteri Alanda and he's ahead of Hugo Olsen as we are going to have a look from the rear. Ah, oh, Jacob Oster, he is in fourth place. Jeff Drake right behind him. Oster moving his car to the middle part of the racetrack. That can be sometimes strategic, not just a case of blocking. Especially if you want to try and make sure that the car behind doesn't have to deal with all the dirty air as we now turn our attention over to Alexis Newsom. In the 13 car, Team I5G are on a rebuilding phase right now for this race. They would have had a game plan, Arjuna. It's been torn up, but game plans can be written in minutes. And it's important, I think, that Jake has managed to get past uh, Jeff Drake because that gap had started to grow. And uh, Oster still in drafting range of Jason Brophy as we work towards the first of the pit stop windows. You'd likely see with the caution that we've had, maybe lap 33, the first uh, benchmark for these cars to roll themselves down on pit lane. Important to execute. It is so difficult. We saw this in 2021 in the real world in the 105th running of the 500 as Newsom looks down low on Jeff Drake. Uh, Stefan Wilson, the most notable of those cars, having major issues on the entry to pit lane. They're so trimmed out. They have so little downforce, and you use the brake so infrequently that when you stamp on it for the very first time, let's just say drama. Yeah, uh, it can be. And also, a lot of drivers spend so much time practicing on their qualifying and then getting a race setup sorted out that sometimes they miss the basics. And it's always a case of do the basics better than anyone else, as Kraus is on pit road at the end of lap number 30. So he's coming in, and he's probably thinking at this time, Lewis, he doesn't want to deal with a massive log jam on pit road. Yeah, as much as you know, contact is off in the boxes, uh, in the pit lane, in the, the slow lane, in the fast lane, contact is still on. And most importantly for me, on your entry to pit lane, contact is still on. So as much as anyone's like, well, there's no contact in pit lane, you can have it as busy as you want. That's not necessarily the case, and it's certainly not the issue around here. I agree with this call. Coming in away from everyone else, coming in a little bit early. Obviously, he's burnt maybe a little bit more fuel anyway. Uh, Harrington also into yep. Brophy is going to stay out. And I, I like this call. I really do actually like this call. It's also useful for a number of different reasons because it means if a caution comes out, your team strategy is not completely down the toilet. I just want to double check, but I do believe that Krause has come out and stayed on the lead lap. 
That often happens if you pick from the top four or five positions, Arjuna. That is vital if there is to be a caution in the next few laps. Basically, if you're five seconds back from the leader, you're in that bubble where you should come out in front. And even if you don't, you've got the fresh tires at that point. We've gone from doing 47 uh, fours, one of the faster laps of the race, 41-4 for Jason Brophy last time by. So that's the indication as it looks like that was Valtteri Alander for the very first time in this iRacing Indy 500 coming down to pit lane. I think, Will, correct me if I'm wrong, it's the first time we've had a finish driver in an iRacing Indy 500 top split race. Oh, we might have had one back in the day. We would have had Marco... Ah, there would have been one. There would have been one. I will find your name. I will get back to you back at the time. We have had female racers in this race before. The first one of them was in 2011 with Monica Clara Brandis. We've got ourselves a tweet from Antti Ahola. He's saying it's the first spin. I, oh, for almost a decade. Ah, there, there we go. go. Marco Vitana, I think, was the last driver to have done so um, many moons ago when we did have a finish car. Look at that. That is the log jam I was talking about before, Arjuna. Yeah, but they all get through there safely. I mean, I think back to Michele Costantini's pit entry in the 2020 Open Wheel 500 mile race. Uh, this was about as coordinated as you're going to get. But like uh, Lewis mentioned, there is still contact in the, uh, in the lane itself. You've got to be careful. Look how tentatively they all slide into their box. You know what, that's very strategic there by Brandon Traino, planting his car there. Just to add a little bit more complexity coming out of the track, there is your leaders. On the main part of your screen, in your picture in picture, you've got the drivers coming out. We've got side-by-side -side racing by your top two. They should come out, I would argue, with maybe about a second advantage as they work themselves back out onto track. They came in one, two, they've hooked up together, and they should have at least a second advantage. In fact, I think it might be a little bit more than that as other drivers are back out onto track. Alexander Van de Sant, uh, Van de Sant is leading the race right now. You've got drivers still cycling through this pit sequence as we are now onto lap 36. Arjuna, potentially the reason why we saw these two come in earlier is because of the, the fact, quite to be honest, that sometimes you get the better tyres, you can use that whole undercut strategy, etc. You talked about the lap times a couple of moments ago. Yeah, no, I, I think that's worked out nicely for them, but all it takes is one caution, right, to, to bring them back into the mix. Do note as well, left side of the screen, the seven cars that are still out there on track came down during the one and only caution that we've had so far today, and I'm watching very closely now. Alexis Newsom and Jacob Oster have both jumped in front of Jason Brophy. It's no longer a private label team hype one, two, three. Instead, Team High 5G now run net third and fourth. And that, Lewis, is all about the strategy that goes on behind the scenes. That is about, as I say, you tear up one playbook, you go to the next one. It's always the case, the next corner up, next strategy up. i 5 g so much experience in this race that they know pretty much how to find a way through most circumstances. And at this stage of the race, you just want to do it little bit by little bit. You don't want to, ironically, go for it all at once. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got a lot of cars, so you kind of got to make them all work together. No point in going on the attack straight from the offer. Uh, we've got Russell into the pit lane. Uh, obviously, the top two in this chance will return to being the uh, top two overall, uh, being Phil Krause and Connor Harrington. Those two switching, obviously, as we've said before, they're trying to uh, keep themselves running at such a high speed. Problem is, they're dishing out an awful lot of slipstream, which is being picked up from those behind. This train will grow. Uh, that group will join them from up behind. Oster, obviously, is just racing, uh, following the racing line all the way around and picking up the slipstream of the top two. That is going to drag all of them back in just bit by bit. And we're at that stage of the race now. We have been over 30 laps green flag, Arjuna. That it's about time that we started talking about some of the other factors that come in. You know, there is a physical fatigue element, especially these drivers running non-direct drive force feedback wheels in particular, that this race can get very, very heavy on the shoulders, on the elbows, on the hands. In addition, now they've done a pit stop, they've got to reset their in-car tools and they've got to think again about how they're gonna work through them over the next 10, 15, 20 laps. It's all about being proactive when it comes to those in-car tools. I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with when they start uh, the transition into the Indy car phase. But one thing to remember in this, you know, era of sim racing where we've got direct drive wheels, we've got all of these new fancy to or toys that we can play with is no power steering in an Indy car. And if you have um, a motor which is as strong as some of these direct drive wheels are, you very much feel all the forces coming through you. And it, it can be considerable. And 
Uh, it's a test of endurance, not just of the mind, but of the body as well, as uh, Andreas Eich and Chad Simpson will dive down to pit road as well. I'll go to the point on endurance, though. Uh, Hugo Olsen is currently running, what, inside of the top ten. In fact, he's jumped up to eighth, plus five from where he started. He's just come off um, a school athletic competition, running in a 4 by 100 uh, relay race with his school got to the session basically as it launched. He was cutting it mighty close. Imagine what a long day it's going to be for him. You said we weren't going to talk about that. I said we weren't going to talk about the other thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that one then. But yeah, these drivers dealing with a lot. And again, in my room right now, I do have a thermometer, Lewis. It's 27 degrees in this room. I can't put the fan on, of course, because I'm doing the talky bit. But it also gets very hot for some people. The sweat, the adrenaline, it all kicks in. Yes, this is quote-unquote pretend race cars, but it's not completely pretend. There's a lot of stamina that has to go in as we continue to see the swapping for the lead the swapping between drivers trying to eke out that advantage. Oh yeah, absolutely. It can be uh, very, very difficult in the heat. Uh, of course, this battle at the moment, we're looking at the, the switching here between two very experienced drivers. Uh, Henry Bennett, who's finished in the top 10, what, the last three uh, races here in the Indy 500. Uh, never finished in the top five, uh, as far as memory goes, but certainly is uh, in the top ten for the last three races. Obviously battling out with the 2018 champion uh, as well, a bit further down, just to try and uh, catch up to this group. Oster has now caught Kraus and Harrington, uh, but you're absolutely right. The heat is a big problem. Uh, kind of where we're still kind of entering some, at least uh, most of us. It's not too bad, uh, but you know, you've got your PC on, you've got your wheel, which generates an awful lot of heat. All of this really, really adds up. And I remember doing races uh, when I used to live at my mother's uh, in the, the highest uh, room in the house. Uh, and I did a race around the Nürburgring once at about 30, 35 and a bit degrees. And I don't think I've ever been more uncomfortable in the middle of a race in my entire life. No, thank you. Oh, well, Vincent's done it. It's not just me and Lewis. I'm, not, that I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. I forgot to hit the button before the I thought the I link. disconnected then. I no, I no, gone. no. It's okay. It's okay. I was, I was actually thinking, Lewis, 36 degrees. That's a little bit too hot. Racepot.wtf forward slash timing if you want live timing and scoring. I right, was so having a look. There's only two people out this race so far. Michelle Constantini from Apex Racing, Brandon Traino for Apex Racing. That is also the cause of our first and only caution of the day that took part on lap number four of this race. Joshua Chin currently oh. P number 11. What's wrong? Oh, is that a blown engine? It's Valtteri Alander on pit oh. lane. I'm not sure what's happened to the 33 machine. I had Maybe. very high hopes for him. That does not look good. No, it doesn't. Very early pit stop. Should not be a penalty. It's been way too long since we've been yeah, out for yeah, a penalty. Agree. So he must have brushed a wall somewhere. Oh, wow. How interesting. Uh, the uh, replay he, will tell us. His rear right does look a little bit mm. towed in, which is a bit of a shame because, I mean, uh, Valtteri Lander is such a good driver in this car. I mean, he won the ISO WC kind of comfortably, really, uh, from a championship point of view. So much so that we were crowning the championship even before the halfway point of the season. Yeah, it is a big shame. But the thing is, in big races like this, especially this track, you know, you've got runoff from most of the road courses. Yeah, typically it's a runoff from the inside. You touch that, you're out of the race. That's it. Yeah, there's a replay then. And it is our favourite part of the racetrack. Through the short shoot, let's have a look. Dirty air. Pushes up high through turn three. Grazes it. Now, I have seen times when he can graze it and survive. But not in that case. He got two hits there, Arjuna. Looks as though he might be done. Well, pretty much out of this race, all intents and purposes. He is back out on track, but he's all the way down now in P number 31. Yep, I'm just trying to now figure out what his goal is going to be for this race. I'm sure now it's going to take a miracle, right, for him to be able in that COVID Esports number 33 to be able to at least get back on the lead lap. It will take a caution. It will take the uh, luck to cycle in his direction as well. And maybe just understanding more about Indy. I was impressed with him in the ISO WC 500. Uh, in fact, across the ISO WC season. I think he had done two or three previous open wheel oval races before he had jumped into this Indy car. Finished or was... 
I should say, was going to finish second at Auto Club in the first oval race that we had mm -hmm. uh, before. <laughs> yeah, Lewis's laugh will give it away. There was a bit of drama yeah, between of crash. Valtteri and Christian Steele as they crashed coming to the line. Valtteri ended up uh, getting a penalty and dropped to the end of the lead lap. But then in qualifying for Indianapolis, which is a big old transition, got into the fast nine, qualified second just behind Brandon Traino. Now he struggled in the race, but I know he took that as a learning experience. He's been working with team talent to try and get back up to speed. I'm sure we'll see him back in 2022. Yeah, indeed. And with one bad moment, of course, drivers, I always say put it out your mind. Anything can happen in sim racing. Anything can happen in motor racing. We might have a time when you can come back from a lap down. I've seen it happen once or twice in the past in these big races. You just need to hope everything goes your way, but don't count yourself out yet. For those drivers, of course, who decided to do the pit at the end of lap number six and seven, it'll be interesting to catch up with them later on and see where they are progressing through the field. Having a look through and I just say he has come out of pit road, Peter number 31, we've talked about that one already. This is Alexander van der Sant from Paris Time Motorsport, running in P number 15, came home second a week ago in the RLC fixed Indianapolis 500. He lost that race by exactly one tenth of a second, Arjuna. He really, uh, I don't think was too disheartened. It's been a blockbuster week for Alexander Van Essen. Yes, second in that 500, uh, but losing out to only someone with the speed and impressive uh, pace of someone like Casey Kerwin, who always impresses no matter what car and what discipline you throw him in. Someone, of course, fighting in the Enascar Coca-Cola. iRacing Series has run in the World of Outlaws, World Championships here in iRacing as well. Uh, then this past Wednesday, his first ever Lionheart IndyCar Series win, where he came out on top against Phil Krause. I have to correct myself. I said earlier, Phil Krause, seven races in, has only won, uh, has lost not one all, but one race. He's finished second or better in all the races, five wins in seven races. Alexander Van Asant, though, became the first to beat him on the track. The last time Krause didn't win a race in 2022, he made a mistake. Van der Sant went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and is on a roll, and really, I think, if it goes green from here, the goal for Van der Sand is to cut out a pit stop. We know how crucial yeah. that is. We know what a game changer that could be. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, we've never had an our recent Indy 500, Lewis, when people have been running the 2011 Indy 500 strategy, or basically just see how quickly you can go with absolutely no fuel as we ride on board then as we have got ourselves this is number 27 car being passed and that is alexander van der Sant trying to go side by side with liam just not able to do so as they work themselves now through turn number four but yeah we've never had a race in my memory at least lewis where the race has been a fuel mileage race to the absolute end and i remember you know 2011 bertrand baguette almost won that year's indy 500. Wow, what about the... Oh, into the wall there, Will Lyon just tapped the wall between one and two. That was a bit of a hard one into uh, the barrier, same as what we saw from Valtteri Alanda, only landed it into uh, three and four, so that's going to drop him uh, right the way back, unfortunately. No, I mean, uh, yeah, which year was it? It was 2015, the one that Rossi won. Uh, yeah. Obviously receiving the nice. slipstream from uh, Townsend Bell, uh, which really assisted him to do it on fuel mileage. Fuel mileage in, you know, in, in sim racing terms, you see that uh, smash against the barrier again. Uh, you know, in, in this Indy 5, it's not particularly the common strategy. It's why we have so many close finishes. I think there's three uh, that come down to under two hundredths of a second, uh, at least, you know, of the, the broadcast ones. I mean, you can count for all the tops, but it's probably much, much more than that. Uh, it, but we don't typically see it. All, always, though, you, you've got to expect someone to give it a go. Someone's brave enough. Someone's taken the risk on strategy with an early pit stop like we saw under caution. I mean, that's, that's uh, it's, it's a brave strategy, but it could be worth its weight in gold. There used to be a driver called Matt Lambertson who would always try the alternate strategy. If you go back as far as I do, you'll know what I mean. A caution comes out, he'll be the first one down on pit road. If you do it, you have to live with it. It's a bit like in endurance racing. We often see the teams trying to stretch out to the hour or go an hour five. You can't just do that once or twice, Lewis. You have to do it the entire race. And I do like your mindset. You have to think of this race like an endurance race. You're just going at just over 215 miles an hour all the time. Yeah, there's uh, no time to really breathe. 
uh, when you think about it. Obviously, when you're uh, around teammates and stuff like Phil Krauss and uh, Connor Harrington, you do have a bit more time because it, you, you know what's going to happen. It's not as if you know, you're know you fighting with uh, some unknowns that aren't a part of your team. You can kind of predict and uh, tell in advance what's actually going to happen in this battle. So you can kind of be a bit more calm. But like you say, it's the, a race like this. You've got to be able to go from breathing calmly to really quickly understanding what's going on uh, in an instant. There is no sort of middle ground. You've got to react so, so fast. At the moment, they're just ticking off laps. I know it sounds crazy, but we always kind of say this with endurance, well, with uh, oval racing, uh, especially this style, is that uh, all you're, you're kind of driving for 190 laps, and then you're properly, properly racing for 10. And that's kind of getting to that point of the race while still in contention. That's the tricky bit. Yeah, indeed. I said five seconds for the first pit stop. You probably want to get that one five to ten seconds if you want to make sure that you stay in the hunt. This way, soon only having one caution. We have now been almost 50 laps green flag racing. We'll get there in a few. Of course, the caution ended on lap number and the end of lap number seven into the start of lap number eight. If we go on board with Hugo Olsen in eighth place, he's got Brandon Lichtenberg just ahead of him, Arjuna, in seventh. Yeah, these two are trying to swap around and close the two-second gulf uh, up the road to Jeff Drake in the sixth-place uh, team talent machine. But at least for now, you can see how much Hugo Olsen closed. He wasn't able to swap around on the back straightaway. Instead, had to wait on the run down into turn number one. So these two do need to be a little bit more friendly and helpful to one another. Last time by, they lost a tenth of a second to Alexis Newsom. Yeah, and they are, as you say, 4.6, 4.8 back from your leader. They are currently just about two seconds away from getting the draft of Jeff Drake. Down to the inside will go Lichtenberg. Pass is Olsen, so they might be working together after all. The issue is as well, they are in proper no man's land, Arjuna, because well, Melitska, who is in ninth place, is almost five seconds behind this draw. Yeah, those guys behind are... I don't know what they're doing. I speculate maybe there is some fuel games going on there because they are, even compared to the leaders, almost half a second slower per lap. It is not a small margin. It is a mighty margin. The other thing that's a, a possibility as we look at that battle for, for ninth on back is the fact that maybe they're just not swap drafting as effectively as those are further up the field. Because I talk again to Brandon Treno and Michele Costantini in the build-up to the race. Those two, when they were swap drafting, were a tenth of a second faster than any other combination in the i5G camp. And a tenth of a second at Indy, it might as well be a country mile. Well, you know for a fact, here's your ESPN and ABC bingo card. If we know it's a second, it is a full football field. Then half a second is half a football field. And a turn for a second, well, that's about a penalty. There we are. Thank you very much for that useful piece of information you used to tell us year on year, ABC. We really do appreciate it, honest. As we look at Olsen on the top part of your screen with Lichtenberg, bottom of your screen, we were looking at the battles going on behind as we cycle through. And these are the cars working themselves then for 22nd place, Austin Esperti has been much higher in this race in years previous. Alexander Russell in 23rd, Marco Brazil 24th. I mean, he's actually had pole position for this race before, Lewis. Yeah, I mean, Austin Espertiz finished in the top five twice back in 2017 and 2018, uh, back to back. And, uh, you know, sometimes the race doesn't start well for you. That's absolutely fine. Running in not so great a position right now is okay. Honestly, it is. It's fine. It's not brilliant. It's okay though. Uh, it's it's about where you are in let's say a hundred laps. If you're still outside of the top ten, if you're still struggling down the the back of the you know, the top twenty and whatnot, that's when you start to have the alarm bells ringing. You know, when you're approaching that final pit stop and thinking, okay, I'm not even remotely close to uh, where I want to be. Uh, Russell, who we're focused on, obviously looking back. Uh, towards uh, the, the the chasing card directly behind of Marco Aurelio Brazil, who, as far as I'm aware, has only had one top 10 finish in this race, despite having the uh, poles and stuff and uh, having run very well. Might be a couple, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Able to qualify very well. A lot of effort goes in with drivers from the Brazilian region to qualify for this race. Of course, Alejo Castro Neves, Brazilian, is one of those drivers looking to go for four? Oh, that was interesting. That we saw there. As uh, so we got a car on pit road, that is Krauss lap 60, 30 stint, 30 stint. Yeah, that's right on time. But 
Over the years, though, Juno, we've seen a lot of Brazilian drivers work together to get into this race. Their race pace has not always been as strong as their qualifying. Marco, in particular, is someone that likes to strip downforce off his cars, whether it be in the race or whether it be in qualifying. So uh, it's important for him to control the tempo. And when he's marred back in traffic, it does become slightly more difficult for him to be able to, to work his way forward. And, and now running by himself was part of the Indy Alliance racing program, but uh, that affiliation and that partnership kind of ending uh, a couple of weeks before preparations, I'm sure, got into full swing for this race. Pits window open, and uh, Lewis was mentioning there was a moment between Alexander Van Assen and Carl Janssen. Lewis what happened here? Uh, yeah, so obviously he gets to the inside. You can see how close they get as they roll up the circuit. It's not so much uh, in the entry to three. It's just on the exit really down into, uh, into four. Uh, Van der Sant on the inside gets a little bit tight and rolls up. That's just how he got past. But a lap prior to this, uh, there was very near contact. It was nearly an enormous crash. Uh, as To be honest, it was sort of one of those 50-51s. It was Van der Sant going up a little bit high. It was uh, Janssen coming down a little bit low. The two nearly came together. We nearly had a second caution, but thankfully uh, they are all right. And uh, Van der Sant, who uh, obviously has been on some slightly fresher tyres, is working his way up. There is a look at that. And he did have a little bit of a call over uh, to Janssen. Obviously, they've all got uh, in-game chat on and thinking, yeah, I'm on your inside, mate. Beep, beep, meep, meep. They don't have flashing lights, so you can't be like, uh, um, <laughs> you can't be flashing your lights here. You haven't got any, is what I was trying to say. Carl Harrington on pit road then for the second time in his race. That means Oster is your new leader. Alexis Newsom in second place. Brophy third. Jake fourth. Oxen in fifth. Maybe seeing a full cycle of green flag pit stops for the second time here, Lewis. Yeah, which is uh, pretty impressive. It does kind of... Uh, maybe make a few concerns. Of course, realistically, if you want to get through this race nicely, you want to put in lap 33, lap 66, lap 99 or 100, and then same again, 133, 166, and then you're good to go to the end, right? Well, we're pitting a bit earlier than that. We're not getting to that sort of, uh, you know, one-sixth distance of the race on each tank, at least uh, you know, for, for some of our drivers, you know, the likes of Phil Krause. They're only getting to the uh, to the 30 lap point back. It's going to start causing some concerns because it might require a bit of a splash later on if there is no caution. Alexis Newsom coming past the start or finish line. Going to lead the race then in the number 13, but not for long. Asta back down to the inside. 16 car, Brandon Lichtenberg on pit road. Let's see my 5 gw forward slash ART, which means with ART, Apex Racing Team. We've got, um, so Chin on pit road as well in the number eight car. If you want to keep an eye out, by the way, on all of the strategies and what's going on, visit our live timing at racepot.wtf forward slash Indy, then click on the top right-hand corner of the page. That is an analysis section, everything you will ever need to know about the drivers in this race. And our journal right now, it looks as though Newsom, Oster, Brophy, um, actually the Brophy's on pit road, Drake is on pit road. Yeah, and when it comes to the private label Team Hype, of course, they're partnered with Team Talent. Many of the drivers for Team Talent run under that label, but the team is owned, or co-owned, I should say, by a endurance specialist in the form of Tommy Milner, who is actually on the pit wall for them uh, this time by. While Milner might not have 500 experience, at least here at the Brickyard. He is someone who knows over the course of a long race how strategy can be vital, and I'm sure it's not taking him long to get up to speed with the nuances of strategy here at Indianapolis. It's a pretty good person to be helping on the pit wall. Yeah, indeed. As past the track they come. So we expect to see more drivers on pit road this lap and next. Maybe Austin Newsom on pit road. Olsen is already on pit road. Pavelski running in fourth. Alexander van der Sand is one of these drivers that we'll expect to see on pit road in your second gaggle of cars. As uh, so we've got Christian Steele on pit road and Zegers is on pit road as well. The way they spread out a little bit, this run, Lewis, is making that pit road more manageable and not as packed as we saw that last time around. And for people in terms of their processes, this makes things easier. I recently, a couple of years ago, added in the countdown to the pit box, but still, as you come in, you don't want to overshoot and you've got to remember it's 
concrete, not asphalt on the actual pit box. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's slippy, uh, especially when you consider your uh, sense of speed is also cut massively. When you're kind of driving down there, you know, 100 uh, kilometers an hour, it's actually really hard to work out how quick you're going because you've just been driving around at you know best part of 350, 360 kilometers an hour. As soon as you're down on pit, ra uh, pit road at those speeds, it, it feels like you're walking. And then yeah. suddenly as you turn in and then break, yeah, you, you've overdone. Obviously, that is one thing which they would have practiced time and time and time again to make sure they get right, cold breaks, uh, and some of that obviously causing uh, their fair share of issues as Oster uh, departs in the pit lane. But it's incredibly difficult. But thankfully, they are getting pit lane a bit more to themselves at the moment, courtesy of us rolling through the, the, the pit lane sequences a bit more. There's no none of like the everyone comes down on one lap, everyone else comes down on the lap after. Now we're starting to spread out a little bit more fuel strategies coming into it. What you just saw was totally legal as the number of um, Olsen coming back out of the pits. What he does is he's basically diamonding off the exit of the pit because you've got to be on the inside of the grass through turns number one and turn number two. There's nothing in the rule book that says that you have to do so in this race um, when you come yourself onto that short shoot on the south end of the racetrack. The other thing that's worth noting, though, Gina, when this race first started back in 2010, this race was running what was called the NASCAR spec of this layout. And if you are a NASCAR fan and wondering how can they pit so easily off turn number four, well, the answer is simple. The pit cones for NASCAR are at the very, very top, right by the attenuator, not in IndyCar. It's much further down. And even at being a few hundred feet or so, it makes all the difference when you need to slow that car down to pit road speed. Yeah, and again, it's all about that downforce that you don't have, right? Downforce really does help as you get on the brakes. It means it's a lot sketchier, not just as you get to the cones, as you slide into your box as well. We've seen on many occasions a, a mistake on your attempt to, to line yourself up. Think back to, to Brandon Trost last week where he got all sorts of wrong and then um, eventually got so frustrated that basically his race was over right there and then. So it's important, and we are seeing lots of passes happening on the pit lane. Hugo Olsen was what? Four or five seconds back mm. from Jason Brophy, Jeff Drake. Look at how now, through this pit stop cycle, he's got in front. Brendan Lichtenberg's in the mix as well. What I'm seeing on the setup side of things, Phil Krause, Connor Harrington, they look good in clean air. So whatever car that they've got, the, the team talent, private label team hype, works very well when you're controlling the field, when you are able to swap around. It's not so good when you're Jason Brophy or Jeff Drake, for example. It could also be. The driver is not as good, uh, but I'd, I'd wager there is something. Oh. Well, Jason, I'm a good Fire. friend of Jason, so he's not going to mind it too much. But my point being, I just wonder if their setup lends itself more to the clean air. That's why we're seeing Power Slide come on through. It's why we're seeing Newsom and Oster trying to chase down Harrington, although the gap opened up in the pit stop cycle. Yeah, it did. And again, keeping the basics done better than anyone else. That includes your in-lap, it includes your way onto your pit stall, it includes the way that you navigate out of pit road as well to come back out onto the track, how quickly you reset your tools, how quickly you get back into the gear. Look at that, Chad Simpson for the moment, I'm trying to remember, that's not actually a real statistic, unless we have a magical caution right now and everyone comes on pit road. He's on that what we call alternate strategy for the time being. We have had some movement across your top 10 though. And this has been for a mixture of strategy, driving, and of course surviving that incident that happened on lap number four of this race. I do think that the teams who will do best here, yeah, we don't know the answer to that. We don't know the answer to that. I can't answer it without getting into lots and lots of trouble. I'll leave that tweet there to talk for itself for a minute. Simpson is now on pit road. You can gain yourself about half a second by being bold on pit road. The thing is, though, Lewis, it's a case of you want to build up to that final pit stop. You want to make sure that final pit stop, you are nailing it to the hundredth of a second. You do not want to get a speeding penalty at any point, but you don't want to get a speeding penalty on lap number 170. So you want to build up to make sure that you're really getting as close as you can to the margin right at the end of the race without overstepping it. Yeah, for sure. I think you know, you've got to build up to it to a certain degree. The first entry into pit lane, do not take any risks. It's your first one, you know, just, just go calm with it. The second one, maybe you take a bit more risk and try and go test it there. Because if you get a drive through and such for speeding in pit lane at that point, whilst it is bad, 
It could be a lot worse, or you know, stopping those um, and whatnot. You know, you, you, you've at least got time to come back from it. Or just don't take that much risk. Always leave yourself half a second, because whilst you know, this race is typically decided in the uh, hundreds or even thousands, sometimes it's just not worth pushing over the limit that far. Uh, you know, sometimes you've just got to, again, play the long game and make sure that you're actually involved uh, in the racing later on. Obviously, we've got a few more pit, uh, pitters coming in uh, in the recent past. Alexander van der Sand, who's now in 11th spot, did pit. But I did note that that pit lane, or that the stint that he had, uh, was, of course, only 31 laps. Again, said that they need to get to really 33 to be more comfortable. Obviously, he pitted a little bit uh, earlier in the race, so five, six laps in. So he's got a little bit of uh, margin on that. But still, that 31 laps, he'll eat into it and he'll have to pit for the about a two or three four lap stint uh, splash at the end of the race unless he goes full save yeah but at the same time he's working himself through the field which is going to be in some cases more important if you get stuck behind a car you're losing those valuable attempts for a second every single time as bennett goes past malexa in about for ninth place here on lap number 75 of 200 and then you've got van der Sant, chin and jansen behind them if you start seeing these drivers um, ahead of you pull away on what we call the relative screen sometimes you need to go harder you need to push harder the track position and track placement can be about as much as also how you navigate josh chin and pino Matro, you think it's got the blurry background because his room is a mess arjuna uh probably probably I, I will say as well josh chin has been working the the night shift recently we missed him in some of our recent lionheart indycar series races as I think competed in less than half of this, uh, the races we've had in 2022 but a previous winner of this event I always wonder what a previous winner thinks when they're sitting back in 12th position even as we get to the halfway marker of this race what's going through their mind where they think they are in terms of pace what they think they can do to work themselves forward and I think that's important as well right because these races are all about the progress that you make look at the power side trio in front of uh, Josh Chin. All of those cars have made up at least five positions so far. Alexander van der Sand, plus 10 on the day today. Yeah, but at the same time, you've got to remember that Josh Chin has been in this position and lower many times in his iRacing career as well. One of the longest serving members of the iRacing community. In fact, there's very few people taking part in this year's iRacing 500 across the split to as much experience as Josh Chin. And sometimes, you know, it's yeah, he's won a race, but those times that he's been plodding along in P number 15, P number 20, that's experience that will help you the year after you won the race, three, four years after you won the race. Yeah, and you, you kind of hope so, because he did win the race five years ago. It was 2018 uh, that he won, but like I said, has done uh, plenty of these. He had his first uh, top 10 uh, in, in one of these back in, two, at least in the broadcast one, 2015. Uh, with a seventh place finish so uh, eyeing up again heading back into all something obviously you know he's not aiming for top 10 he's aiming for something a little bit greater than that but you're absolutely right experience uh pays its own weight uh, really and that's going to be absolutely critical right now uh speaking of experience and stuff and speaking of uh, the race uh Krause and harrington obviously first and second as we've seen for pretty much the majority of this uh, 80 lap race so far uh, newsom and oster that when they came out of the pit lane they were about two seconds back uh, from the top two obviously working together they have dragged that gap down and now right uh, knocking at the door for the lead of the race once again yeah, Newsom's done a fantastic job since the last pit stop. And Newsom now in third place, four times for a second back. And this is one of those key phases of the race now, Arjuna. Newsom can try and go for the race lead or can try and save fuel. The same will apply to Oster in fourth. Guess it all depends on how they feel their car is relative to the private label team hype cars. If they think they can get in front and, and drop the duo who are you know continuing to swap back and forth and maybe you go for it but we saw what happens when you try to take it three wide on lap number four and not even at the halfway marker of this race there's still a long way to go plenty of opportunity for things to happen on pit lane and one thing that i'll note on pit lane as well a lot of times people don't realize will that you 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 need to use the clutch to get out of your box you can get a lot of time by getting on the power nicely and really launching yourself out of the storm it's something we saw this past wednesday when alexander van der beat phil kraus every time they came into pit road together alexander van der was able to to gap phil kraus by at least a second or so 
the, yeah. the, the, the technique there is something you have to practice. If you don't have the muscle memory there, you don't want to risk it. It's where you find a lot of time. Uh, it's not like in Indy 500s, even in 2000. Oh, so, okay, what's going on there? Um, that was Carl Janssen off the turn number two. Christian Steele, Matt Pavelski, Daniel Zegers just behind. I'll make my point for the time being. You know, even in 2022, Lewis, you seem to have big, burly men pushing Indy cars out of pit road. You can't get that in sim racing. Uh, Lewis has run off for a couple of moments for a comfort break, but yeah, it's, it's something you can't... It's a lot of things in the real world that I think we'd love to have here on iRacing, right? The celebrations pre-race, the qualifying drama, right? The real world, you get a limited number of runs. Every time you head back out there, you lose the time that you've already set. It adds to the intensity. Qualifying for the Indy 500 here on iRacing, the official one, is a grind. Five days of qualifying. How many sessions that can you uh, can you do? A lot of drivers have done 40-plus qualifying runs to try and get the lap times on the board. It's why I love the Open Wheels 500 mile race so much. Not biased because now I run it, but it's because it celebrates what Indy is about and it brings that festivity. It brings that celebration to our little community yeah i did it first um but lap number 83 and it is worth noting yeah you know big burning men pushing virtual race cars might be a push of too much and stuff and here's the replay we saw of the number 20 that we saw going very loose off a of turn number two here's a look at the replay and okay I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be making of this. We're having a look from Matt Pavelski's angle. They get mighty close together, and then coming off the corner, it just looks like he cuts across the entire track there, Lewis. I think Janssen was potentially sending a message, being like, yep, yeah, cool, try not to kill me. Uh, of course, you don't have likes and whatever, so you know, I'm not really a massive fan of it myself. Uh, but I do think that Janssen was more sending a, uh, a message. Was it Christian Steele or was it Josh? Because it's hard to tell because it's two Steel. purple cars. I think it was Steele, yeah. Uh, more so just being like, please try and not kill me the next time when you go side by side into turn two. Uh, you know, uh, the thing is, when you go for a move around here, the moment that you even look, you're committed. You can't just go, ah, actually I won't bother. You've, if you're having a look, you've, you've got to go. Uh, there's well, no 50-50 yeah. about it. Because actually, if you then try to switch across the track or pull out, you can actually yeah. put your car in a worse situation. You can actually then either A, get a bit of oversteer, or B, if you cut across dirty air at the lowest moment, you just start drifting up the racetrack. And once you're halfway up that racetrack and you've not got your, your anti roll by your weight jacket working perfectly, the next thing that you're going to see is called a safer barrier, Lewis. Yeah, and it's uh, a pretty tasty crash, uh, if you do so, which surprisingly enough, in the opening uh, 85 laps of this race, we've only had one car go up towards the safer barrier. Everyone else has been actually fairly well reserved uh, and been a bit calm with the moves. No uh, risky three wides outside of that uh, lap four uh, incident on the run down into turn one, which I, I think is kind of right. I mean, these are quite literally the very best. Uh, at racing around uh, Indianapolis in these cars. So, you know, they, they know how to play the long game uh, with that kind of stuff. Obviously, at the start of the race, yeah, adrenaline's pumping. You've got to try something. When we get to this point, it's a little bit harder also to make it three wide. And so the, the more laps that tick off, there are some people out there that are praying for a caution, aren't there? And they'll, uh, they'll be sat there thinking, come on, surely we can't keep going. But you know at this point, once everyone's in the rhythm, a caution is a lot, a lot less likely. I'm back. I'm back. I didn't get it this time, I promise. You get to that point halfway through the race where there are some people who actually just want to stretch. I've heard stories of people getting leg cramps in these yeah. races. By the way, if you're new to iRacing, you're new to race, but hello, make sure you do all the stuff all the other YouTubers tell you to do. But most importantly, you know, you can be running at this track. You could be running in this car in next year's iRacing Indianapolis 500. I mean, you can set up a private session and run it yourself right now. If you're a new member, memberships are 40% off. Just go to iRacing.com forward slash membership and you can join your iRacing journey today. And who knows, you could well be battling it out with some of the biggest names over the next couple of years. Because we're, we're going to be honest here, Lewis. To get into the top split of the Indy 500, not many can do it on their first attempt. I managed to qualify once 
I finished 16th in the race, one lap down. I was thinking my words, thank goodness, that is all over. I mean, yeah, some people know they're naturals at it. Also, you know, if they fit into the right team at the right time, suddenly, uh, you never know. You at home could be jumping onto a grid. So just, and even if you don't jump into top split, I mean, hey, you can do the race anyway because every split, uh, you're still fighting for the same prize. You're still doing the same thing. And that's where the, the, the joy of taking part in a special event on iRacing is all about. I am devastated that in all of my years of being on iRacing, for whatever reason, uh, last year it was all scheduling, the year before it was scheduling, you know, stuff. Uh, this year, hello, I'm, I'm broadcasting, you know, on it. I, I've never done an Indy 500 on iRacing, and that really hurts, because I really want to do one. Well, you've got another chance to do it tomorrow. Oh, I'm busy. No yeah, classics. Start making excuses, as we've got cars <laughs> on pit road. That is Kraus coming in for his third pit stop. Only 29 laps that's did now, Arjun, compared to his 30s. Yeah, I just wonder if they know maybe the strategy from Alexander Van der Sant is going to be to try to cut a pit stop. He's 10 laps uh, fewer into the run compared to those out front. So maybe the idea here for, for Van der Sant is that, you know what? I'm going to go as long as possible. Maybe from now we'll see him be a little bit more res uh, reserved and conservative. Maybe Krause is going the opposite. Uh, trying to minimize the amount of time that he spends on the worn tires. To get back out, get a slight undercut working as well. The pit stops are quite long. Usually we'd see, you know, maybe eight to nine second pit stops. But because of how much fuel these cars are putting in as Connor Harrington will work his way down onto pit road, uh, they're almost just under 10 second stops. They are packing the car with as much fuel as they can put in. It's very fascinating to see how the strategy is going to play out. It always makes me laugh how many sim racing drivers do the little blip, their tongue kind of hanging out their mouth when they're doing something important. I've seen it so many times <laughs> in endurance racing, so many times. You know what I mean here, Lewis, don't you? 100%. 100%. I, I think it's when you, uh, it's why I hate being on webcam when we're, if I'm driving, because you don't necessarily realize it, but when you drive, people look like idiots. We like you, you just can't help it because you're focused so much on what's going on. The one, <laughs> I hope he's not watching, the one that I always remember is Sebastian Job, who every, watch him go through a corner, and it, it's, it's like he's taken a sip of tea constantly. Oh and no, that's so a better bizarre. one. Uh, Pablo Castro, who is one of the funniest Twitch streamers that I'm watching right now, <laughs> who's also got the best heart rate game in the business. But uh, every time he goes into a corner, he does like a little reset. And it gets to the point where Team Redline were doing a team stream, Will, of, of the Bathurst 12 hours, where of course we did see Max Verstappen racing. And Max was making fun of Pablo for it on the stream, on the camera. It, <laughs> it was fantastic. I love it. <laughs> You know what, I've heard rumours that Max was almost going to come and join us in Milton Keynes last week, but you know what, it doesn't matter. We had 70 people there, it's a lot of fun. Everyone apart from a certain Lewis McLean. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. You talked about people who you don't like, Lewis. You didn't even let me know that you weren't coming. And we had a hotel room booked you and everything. I, I thought our junior was going to be there. I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how it goes. I'll sit on you, Lewis. It's just, it's just pure fear uh, of our junior. Everything. It's why I'm even surprised I'm even here on this broadcast. I'm going to leave that one there. What I would say, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, I, I, you team tie lot, you can sort yourselves out. I'm going to comment on Alexis Newsom leading this race by five terms to a second over Oster. Oster then has got himself a gap to Olsen. Worth noting that Newsom is a lap better on both fuel and tyres than both Oster and Olsen and Jake. So... Newsom actually having a really good time of it right now in that number 13 car and um, doing a fantastic job as we're getting closer to halfway in this race, Arjuna. Yeah, and I mean, what a statement that would be, right? The 2021 Lionheart Speedway Series champion, the first female champion for Lionheart. If she could become the first female top split winner of the iRacing Indianapolis 500, I'm always impressed with Alexis. And I've said this before, I was unsure how she was going to fit in with the i5G team, who we know like to have some fun, they like to have their memes and whatnot. I mean, just look at Arca Break Weekly. That is a meme of a series that has become so That's much great. more. Yeah, it's great, but it requires, I think, you to fit into this environment. Lewis and I talk about this all the time. You have to find a family in sim racing. Because you only talk to these people for the most part online, you might never meet them in person, you've got to find a place where you're comfortable. And I've, hear, I've been hearing some really encouraging things that Alexis is fitting in wonderfully with the i5G team, and you can see that in her performance as well. Her debut for i5G, she just happened to win a Monday Night IndyCar race here live on RaceBot TV. Indeed so. And she's not the first 
um, female to lead this race. That was done back in 2011. In fact, Monica Clara Brand almost did win the iRacing Indy 500 if it was not for a really badly timed pace car where she had to come in and top up before the pits were open, Lewis. So this race has Ooh. so much history, but anything can still happen. We don't know when the next caution will be. We don't know if there even will be another caution. We've just got to think about this race as it is now because it can change instantly. We've got to keep up just as much as everyone else. I mean, you know, speaking of moments like that, uh, there, are, there are so many, uh, almost countless, whether it's in the real world or even in sim racing, in races like this. Uh, the Indy 500 is a prestigious race, be it virtually or, yeah, well, very much so uh, in, in real life. Uh, I mean, I think we've all agreed. Uh, it's number one on my bucket list. Uh, sorry to any other major race. I'd love to go and see the Indy 500. I'm a bit jealous of, uh, of Arduino and of you. Well, actually, you've, seen, you've been to see it uh, a good few times yourself. You know that always in a race like this, you have to drive the race that you're driving. You can't think about what the race could be. You can't think about what might happen. You have to drive the race that is presently happening and except for every decision you make you're essentially seconds away from potential heartbreak regardless of which way you're going whether you're going too long or going too short it could all go wrong in an instant indeed as we now work on to lap number 98 of this race i always like to take a quick moment here and remember our good friend dan weldon Hey, that was still quicker than an ESPN or NBC ad break, wasn't it? Well, look at this. Traffic jam at 200 plus miles an hour here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as we start lap number 100 of this 200 lap race. Oster is on pit road. We expect to see a couple of other drivers come on towards pit road. It could well be Alexis Newsom leading this race at the halfway point, but she is due on pit road this time as well. Alexander Van der Sant will then take over the lead of this race, but himself, Matt Pavelski, are on what we are currently calling this alternate strategy. So welcome along. We are almost about to start the second half of our coverage here on RaceBot TV. Newsom is indeed on towards pit road. So we're going to start lap number 101. Newsom on pit road. Alexander van der Sand will take over the lead of the race as Newsom is on to the lane, Lewis. Yeah, I mean, uh, Newsom's doing great on fuel. She's uh, not the, this stint. This stint was 31 laps, which is kind of what we've expected from quite a few. The stint before this was 33, uh, obviously being able to save quite a lot. Uh, obviously was running a lot faster this to try and catch the uh, the two leaders uh, at the moment or that, at that point being Phil Krause and Connor Harrington. That's kind of like the, the critical thing uh, for, for that to kind of close that gap back up again. She might have to do it again over this stint as well because uh, of course we expect her to come out around the same point of, of Oster uh, but maybe won't have to burn quite as much fuel this time. Uh, and that, uh, if she can get it to 33 laps again, Again, you're, you're in that point where you might be able to save enough fuel to make it on just two more stops from this point when we know that Phil Krause and Harrington will 100% have to do it uh, on three more stops. Oh, Let's talk about the drivers who are out of this race. I hit the button. It's your fault, Arjuna. I'm blaming you. <laughs> I'm not blaming you. Guys. Oh, I'm blaming wow. you. Michelle Constantini is out of this race. Brandon Trainer is out of this race due to a big incident. Free wide, turn one, lap number four. One other driver is out of this race, and that is Will Lyon. We've got 30 runners still participating in this one. Over 100 laps in, looking at the battle for second place on track. Philip Krause right now has got Alexis Newsom and Connor Harrington behind. This is a battle on the road right now for second place so Newsom has been able to split up this duo maybe looking to take charge of the front of this main train Arjuna and crucially as well she is not far off the stint of Alexander van der Sand, who's working that 32 of his run she's only at a two three lap deficit compared to Phil Krause who's at an almost uh, 10 to 15 lap deficit as van der Sant will come down into pit lane so if you're Newsom, you've got a big smile on your face it's no longer a private label team hype one and two and if what i was thinking about the setups is correct if 
The private label Team Hype setup doesn't work as well in Dirty Air. This is an opportunity for Team I5G to wrangle control of this race once more. Here's the interesting thing, Lewis. If you're in Newsom's position, you have the option of either taking the lead or doing a nice little bit of fuel saving. Which one would you do? Because for me, I just like to throw the wrench in. I'd like to sit there. I'd like to wait. I'd like to fuel save. I'd like to really screw the head of Kraus and Harrington. Oh, 100%. I mean, look, if you're in Newsom's point of view right now, if you take the lead, you're, yes, maybe going a little bit faster. You know that Harrington's probably going to close up anyway. Uh, it's still getting enough of the slipstream, so it's kind of like, right, that's, uh, that's almost inevitability. That's probably going to happen. What you're doing by sitting behind, you are saving your own fuel, getting closer to making it a 33 Hey, maybe even a 34 lap stint and really putting yourself in safety of doing this in just two uh, laps. And by the way, I've just seen on my other screen that Van der Sands just had a bit of a moment uh, coming into turn three, uh, nearly losing the rear end. Hope he uh, can keep that one on the road because that would be a little bit scary and a very large crash indeed. I don't think they could afford a yellow flag at this point. But yeah, sat behind Phil Krause, saving your own fuel, making, making it a 34 lap stint, but also causing Phil Krause to burn more fuel. Let's see this moment. That was called cool, Arjuna. Oh, I really should have made sure I reset everything yes. in my car. And not as scary as what Ian Chen Guven had in last week's Fix 500. I encourage you to look at the Twitch. Just look at the steering, though. He basically just locks it down. Uh, straight steering on the brakes, on the throttle, to try and minimize the amount of weight transfer going on. Good car controls. Uh, he needs a change of overalls, that's for sure. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> it's one of those things I say, do the basics right. That is going to be my, my big thing for this race. Do the basics right. You've only got 12, 13 seconds on pit road, Arjuna. These drivers, they need to do a swig of water, a little, little bum stretch, as I like to call it, and then make sure you, you completely reset your in-car tools. Especially because you design a setup to work through the range of in-car tools through the course of a run. The front and rear anti-roll bars, the weight jacker that changes the, the balance of the car from, from tight to loose. Uh, you need to make sure that when you get the cold tires especially, because cold tires you might have a different setting to once their tires are warm even when they're still new. Proactiveness, that is what's crucial. And you talk as well about the quick you know, swig of water. There's not much more time. 10 seconds in the box. I've done four-hour VLN races, uh, the Nürburgring Landstrecken series, uh, Green Hell races in the past by myself. I've been able, with a 60-plus second pit stop, to run out of my rig, go use the bathroom, wash my hands, and then get back into the rig. You don't get that opportunity here in a race that can go four hours or longer. I don't think we're looking at that sort of a race, though. We've what, been here for about an hour and a 20 minutes, hour and a half so far. Only an hour more from uh, indications if we go green from here. You know what? With that speed, you did great in the military. Um, we used to have no. 10 minutes to to get change after physical education, um, whatever they call it, PT, sorry, physical training, um, shave, do everything else, get dressed, be back on the parade ground in your other uniform. Yeah, you don't have much time to do the showering or any other business. Krauss leading, Newsom second, Harrington third, Asta fourth, Olsen fifth, Jake Brophy, Lichtenberg, Bennett and Alexa round out your top ten. Let's then talk about inspired drivers of the race. I'm going to come to you first, Lewis. Who stood out the most for you so far today? I mean... It, it is really tricky to go for anyone other than Alexis Newsom right now because she's absolutely flying. Getting held up a little bit there uh, by Chad Simpson, which is just allowing Phil Krause to pull out uh, a bit more of a gap. But I'm going to go for the brave alternate strategy of uh, Van der Zandt. I, I really like the idea of doing something very, very bold, of taking the risk early on uh, and working its way up bit by bit. 12th position at the moment, which doesn't sound great but keep an eye on that car when it comes to late in the race. I think it's going to be in a really strong spot. Arjuna? I'll go slightly off ball. I want to talk about those making their first top split appearances uh, in this race. Yes, Van der Sand's already been said, so I'll go with someone else. Uh, Adriano Pinheiro in tenth pos uh, up 10 positions at the 17th, working by himself, being impressed by the pace that he's shown. David Porcelli, another one. He's a, a driver that's done real-world racing in open-wheel machines, but in Europe, on the road courses. Joined up with the satellite racing team uh, about a couple of weeks ago. It's not been long for him as part of the, the red and blue program. He's up 12 positions, up into 18. He might not be at the front of the field, but ultimately, in a race as competitive th as this, in a race as tough as this, it's all about gradual improvement. It took Brandon Trainer a while to win number one, and he went three on the row, uh, three on the bounce after that. For David Porcelli, very impressed by what he's done so far.
Yeah, your first Indy 500 in a top split. Only one driver can drink the milk after the race. Everyone else, it's all about development. Yes, it can be so horrible being second place in this race, but for at least 10, 15 drivers in this race here today, they would have known coming in, Lewis, that the chances of victory are slim. Not saying there's no chance, it's always slim. The thing is, every lap in this car is something that you can then take. Even though the car will change, tire compounds can change, you take everything around this track, you build it into your muscle bank, into your memory, into how to deal with a situation the year after, the year after that, and so on. I mean, your chance of winning coming into a race like this, uh, shockingly enough, is 1 in 33, because everyone really has the chance of winning. As we grow through the race, the, the chances decrease for some, increase for others, but you know, everyone on the grid is here to win. No one wants to just take part and get a top 10. No one wants to just be out here for experience. And I know that is so cliche because surely that's the same for every race, but kind of not really. I don't know what it is, but you know, for, for some races, some people own endurance races or you know, touring car races or whatever, some people are quite happy with a top five, a top 10, obviously you, you want to win. But yeah, you'd be pretty happy with a top five or top ten around here. I'm sorry, it's 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 win or nothing. Yeah, you know, it's a special event. It's the Indy 500. You've got to do it. It's that's Jack a car. Off. No, 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 that's a wheel off. You're right, Arjuna. That is. Is that one of the only Carl, one of these sports cars? It's Carl Jensen on his debut in this 500. Ran the ISOWC last year. Partnered up with Team Talent. Of course, that was under the white and orange of course sim racing. Now it's a white and blue machine. It's the first time I'm pretty sure that we've had a car smack into the wall. Something will we saw plenty of times in the fixed 500 with that very difficult to tame setup. Yeah, indeed. So, and the reason why we have not gone to a caution is because there's no drivers around. And of course, going on the apron is not classified as part of the active racing surface here on Iris. And Carla Janssen, you can see, is on pit road. So we stay green. Lap number 113 of 200. I forgot to say, by the way, that was your inspired drivers of the race brought to you by Insert Sponsor here. So thank you very much to them as we just turn our attention then back to the replay. What happened? Janssen gets Ooh, contact. Still. That was hard into the wall. I mean, that's exactly how you'd want a safe barrier to react in real life. <laughs> Another replay from up above. Now, yeah, to definitely make contact there. Again. Yeah, that's what I say. First, it's again, but I think B, this is also Christian Steele, who was in a similar situation last year um, where he got taken out in a moment. That was a three wide situation, similar to what we saw on lap number one. Is, is that Connor Harrington down to pit road yes. on lap 23? Oh, my word. What I'm is the call here? The this is, no, this is, I can't make it on two more stops. I'm going to make the rest of my stint shorter. Very it's a trust you I've seen work a lot of times before. I don't expect to see crowds on pit road. This is basically not putting all of your eggs into the same basket, potentially trying to see, okay, four or five situations might happen. Let's each adjust to those down the line. Unless he's had an incident, but he's not. He's out and away, Arjuna. Yeah, I was going to say, watch the pit stop and see if he's up on the jacks for maybe, or rather in the box for longer than possible. But off the jacks, rolls with a tank of fuel. And I, I think what Lewis is saying is right. Uh, you don't want to put all the eggs in one basket. You need to try and mix things up. Only one car can win. You see that I5G is on a slightly different strategy. You don't want to make Phil Krause. You don't want to leave him hung out to dry. Give Connor Harrington the chance to fight back. Although maybe somewhat crucially he's come out in the thick of some fighting aj musselman marco brazil in front of him a teammate in the form of andreas ike behind and connor harrington has to go on the outside of turn three to hold off the muscle man but don't forget he's got fresh tires and those fresh tires the next five laps should make it a lot easier to carve his way through the field so yes traffic can be a distraction but Krause is in is Oh my word, so yeah, he's in They're as well. Doing so. it. They're both doing the strategy one lap apart, but Lewis, the key part right now, use those fresh tires, keep a cool head, but you've got to remember, you can't go too aggressive. You need to keep a little bit of tire life in there, and you need to make sure you keep yourself calm negotiating traffic. You know what I think the other thing I've done here? They wanted to put Newsom all out by themselves, yeah. and it's going to mean it's 1.7 seconds between P1 and P2. This could be a stroke of genius, but it looks as though they just said to I5G, we're not playing your games. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, basically, um, for, for those two, between Connor Harrington and Phil Krause, they were about 20 laps shy from, from the end of the race, right? So 
if you're 20 laps shy, well, you oh! might as well. Oh, 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 Phil Krause straight up the track. Oh, that's that's going to be a black flag. That's a black flag. So Krause, I was about to say, was fighting for being the first driver to win this race on pole position, you know, for a long, long time, having the fastest, fastest lap of everyone. That one's down the toilet, Arjuna. That'll be a black flag for an unsafe pit entry talk me through it i mean you can see you talk about the v he's trying to do that but he just turns in a bit too late he gets off the banking at the worst possible angle and you know what if you're andreas like your life is just flashed before your eyes and keep watching from here because you're gonna see phil kraus hug himself to the left like you said it's a penalty for an unsafe pit exit he takes the access road phil kraus knows his race is over i mean yeah he's gonna be a lap down that's the thing a normal pit stop you can survive and be on the lead lap. In this situation, he will go a lap down here, Lewis. So he is now crossing everything he has to hope for not one caution, to hope for multiple cautions, to A, get back on the lead lap, B, to move himself back up into the top 15 at least. I mean, that's what happens when you run things to you. Uh, that they changed their strategy to the private label Team Hype uh, group. They went full aggressive to try i mean i like i love the strategy they were trying to get uh, like you said alexis newton to run in some fresh air uh, by herself to try and make that car burn some more fuel understanding the threat that's coming uh, from that number 13 in doing so uh, they might well have put themselves in a good spot with one car however uh, phil kraus very very costly mistake was just trying to take that little bit too much this is what we were saying earlier about you know if you nail pit lane exit and pit lane entry maybe you can gain yourself half a second maybe a second is it worth it? Uh, and uh, you'd have to say now, Phil Krause will be sat there thinking, no, no, it wasn't. Still, though, can play his part in this race, even if he's uh, a lap down uh, later on in the race. Exactly what uh, Townsend Bell did, as I said, uh, before with uh, Alexander Rossi back in 2015. Yeah. You can, you can still play your part. That's the thing. For the moment, Connor Harrington has lost his dance partner as well. So it's a double blow here. There was an incident. Before, actually, before I get to that, I want to say... I'm going to be honest for a moment. I don't often make controversial statements. It's about time that has happened in this race. I've always hated this rule. The car is coming back onto the track and docking back in. It makes it really hard for drivers working through turn one and two. If there's a pass going on at the same time, who knows what can happen? It's a shame, but I'm glad it's happened to someone in, in the eyes of people to see. Now, to go back to the, my history lesson, there was a time when Jonathan Goat had another similar penalty. He ended up slowing down and helping a teammate out, and it caused a lot, and I say a lot of issues, from those who are not a part of his team. Now, here comes the interesting thing, as Oster, by the way, has caught from 1.5 seconds back and passed Newsom. So Oster was 1.5 back. Newsom might have slowed down to get some more some more air, some more opportunities to fuel save though, Arjuna. Yeah, I think as well the swap draft is what they're thinking about as well. But watch this with Van der It's not the first time we've seen him get loose. He's really got a loose race car. We like to say loose is fast. He's lost no. two positions. He's behind Chris Steele and Matt Pavelski. Yeah, you do not want a loose race car in turns two, three, and four of Indianapolis. You want it to be a little bit loose with turn number one but you definitely do not want to having to deal with sliding all the way around this racetrack. Asta and Newsom, they are indeed swapping positions. So a slight change of strategy then for these two, but it's still potentially going to work out for them. If you're Connor Harrington right now, you've got to be thinking of a new game plan, Lewis, and that game plan might be getting on the radio and might be saying to his teammate, look, you're out on this one. Can we give me a hand? But if he does that, a number of people, both in our chat, across the community, they're going to have a multiple of opinions. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's racing. That's in Indianapolis. You know, you, you, if you've got a teammate that can help out, yes, they might be a lap down and stuff. But still, it, you've got to kind of drag them back into it as once again they switch. Uh, Olsen is closing in on this, though. Now, 1.1 seconds behind the Power Slide Motorsport car. So he is closing in. Uh, Drake and Brophy are way too far behind with uh, Lichtenberg as well. There's Olsen straight into the pit lane, so running on a very similar kind of aggressive strategy to, uh, obviously, naturally, uh, to what we were seeing from Phil Krause uh, and Harrington. 
Yeah, it's an interesting little one here. Olsen on pit road. So Olsen in the number four car is on pit road. As I said before, racepoint.wtf forward slash indie if you want to have all of the timing and scoring and all of the strategy overviews for all of the drivers in this race. Right now, Alexis Newsom was 24 laps into a stint. Jacob Oster, 25 laps into a stint. Behind, Jeff Drake, Jason Brophy, Brandon Lichtenberg are all 28 laps into a stint. Christian still 27, Arjuna. Yeah, Christian Steele taking advantage of Alexander Van der Sant's slip-up. I think Van der Sant's not the power slide motorsports car to watch anymore by virtue of the couple of issues that he's had that have cost him a couple of seconds. Yes, keep an eye out for that strategy maybe, but he's a little bit closer on, on, on the call to the likes of Newsom than I think he would have wanted as Pinheiro's down on pit road. I think Hugo Olsen's the one to watch. Yes, he's going to have to do an extra stop compared to some of the other machines, but he is really on a tear. We saw his speed during the open wheel 500 mile race in 2020 as well. It was a three horse race involved Michele Costantini, and I forget the third car in that battle. Costantini made that mistake on pit road, and Hugo Olsen controlled the race from there. He's on a roll in what is already a long day for him. He's clearly got the speed. Yeah, it's been an incredibly fun day at the same time here for the 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500. So thank you very much to everyone who has joined us across social media to watch this race. We are hoping that you're having an enjoyable one. These races seem to be getting quicker and quicker as well, Arjuna. You know, there is a time when you have nine, 10 cautions in this race. The last few years have been, well, Always, you can't say caution free, but cautions are seem to be such more of a rarity than what we were used to six, seven years ago. And as a couple more cars peel off, I think Jeff Drake being the lead of them. A part of that is this package, right, that we've got. It's it's something we see in the real world as well. This is not just here on iRacing that things have become less of a pack race and more of a a single file choo choo train with swap drafting at the very front of it. It's very, very difficult to to be able to to work forward. Part of that, I want to say, might be the aero screen and, you know, the added weight that it's, that it's got on the car, the way that it changes the balance of the machine as well. However, I think part of it is the fact that this particular chassis, you know, the IR18, it's just not as good a, an oval car as maybe the DW12 or the IR05 were. But there's a reason for that, Will, because in the real world, when you're pack racing, you think of something like Texas in 2015, oh. it is very scary. Ugh, no, and, and, and to be honest, you know, I grew up watching both kart and then IndyCar with pack races at Chicago Land, Texas, Michigan. No, I don't want to see that ever again, to be fair. And also, we've got to remember that two thirds of the races in the Entity Data IndyCar series are actually, as Christian Stills on pit road, um, they're on road courses or on street circuits. So this is not an oval car compared to when the IR05 came out, when they were just starting to add in road courses. I think Watkins Glen was the first one back in 2005, and the series is still very oval centric. In fact, it was until, up until just after the time the DW12 was released in the, the good old Randy Bernard era, when he started to screw in everything. <laughs> Uh, I didn't say that one out loud. Marco Brazil has worked his way through the field, but he's on this alternate strategy, isn't he, Arjuna? He is, uh, but I think, again, we're more focused on those cars that he sandwiched by Connor Harrington, and then yeah. right behind Brazil is the other yellow car as Brazil's going to come down. The fact that Hugo Olsen is closed on Connor Harrington tells me that while... Harrington's gap to Newsom has closed by virtue of going a little bit more aggressive with the call. It's cycling out maybe in the direction that I5G would have wanted. Because I remember at one point Hugo Olsen was, what, five, six seconds off the leading pack where Connor Harrington yeah. was swapping with Phil Kraus. I think if you're the Swede, you're quite happy. I think if you're I5G, you're quite happy as well. I think if you're team talent, private label team hype, you're a little concerned, but by no means can you count Connor Harrington out. This is still a free team race. At this stage of the race, with over 50 laps to go, quite clearly, there's still three teams in this race. And to go back to the talks that we talked about already, about strategy, about all the other aspects of this race, if you are Team I5G, you've just got to stick to the game plan at this stage. I always say the drivers who seem to, to struggle the most in this race, Lewis, are those drivers who start off well, have a game plan then someone does something they switch up their game plan and then switch up again before they know it they have no idea what their game plan is anymore 
Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing is you need to be able to react uh, in the middle of the race to what everyone else is doing, but then also know when not to react. And that, the, the knowing when not to react is, in my opinion, the hardest part of that level of strategy. It's easy to go, oh, they pitted early, I should probably pit. That's easy, but it's kind of, they pitted early, I don't care. I'm, just, I'm doing what I'm doing, you do what you do. We'll, we'll see where we are at the end of the race. And that's yeah. kind of like the, uh, the big part of it. Like, for example, whilst all this is going, there's Oscar down onto pit lane. Uh, Alexis Newton is going on. Remember how I said it was 33 laps? It was a really important yeah. bit, as we all know, dividing uh, the race into sixth. What's just happened? Going on to that 33rd lap of the stint, Alexis Newsom make, make, making some uh, excellent fuel mileage. Also got a little bit of slipstream uh, from the car ahead, uh, which is Brandon Lichtenberg, of course, uh, a lap down, but still just being able to pull that car along, save it a little bit extra fuel. Yeah, and this will be important. Well, Newsom come onto us pit road this no. time? No. So really? it'll be a 34 lap stint, and that was the extra lap that was needed. So if this race goes green to the end, Newsom can do this race on just basically two more tanks of fuel. You get to this starting, you get to this phase in the race, and all of a sudden, all those guys have been doing strategy, crunching the numbers, Arjuna. They've gone from being worried to just starting to smile a little bit. The thing with a fuel mileage race is that, well, while there are fuel base strategy, I'll correct myself there, is you never know how it's going to play out, right? And that's why I like some of the leagues, endurance leagues that we cover at race, but where we have safety car interventions, right? Because you can think of a strategy, but you've got to be adaptable. Newsom's in this time by. You, you have to try and just hope that things go for you, but you've got to be ready to throw it out and try something different if needs must. And you look at that gap between Hugo Walson, Connor Harrington, and Jacob Oster. It's up to six and a half seconds right now. The undercut from Harrington has worked a treat, and he's found a dance partner. He's found some dancing boots to work with as well. Hugo Olsen might be Connor Harrington's best friend as we come up towards 60 laps to go. Yeah, six and a half seconds might seem like a lot. It's nothing compared to potentially 40 seconds if you get your pit stop working out all together. Hugo Olsen then leads this race. Harrington down to second. Newsom is coming out of pit road, but look at that gap. That is a massive massive gap lewis and possibly hearing the news from earlier newsom doesn't do as much of the on-track shenanigans between turns one and two comes back out onto track 8.4 it'll be about nine seconds once it all settles down behind olsen and harrington i think the bigger issue is let's look at newsom now what do you see ahead a load of clean air 90 percent of the time you're sat there thinking great loads of clean air she'll be sitting there thinking uh, whoops, that's a lot of, yeah, wants to save fuel, wants to get again to that 33 lap, uh, lap point, in the, it, the final stint might be a bit easier to save, uh, you know, depending on when other people are pitting and such, this is the thing though, this is crunch time, this is where you know that you have committed to a strategy, whatever that strategy is, you are on it, you are locked in right now, unless it's a safety car, you know, unless we get a caution, then things get opened up once again, but right now you are absolutely locked into your strategy and you can't afford to worry about anything else. Whilst Oster and Newsom are once again closing in, there's half a second between the two of those. Uh, great stuff. They have to worry about Drake, Brophy uh, and Lichtenberg, who we're on board with right now. It's worth noting that Newsom is closing up to Oster. I was about to say that it's already happened. Um, I was going to say that she'll be able to close up to the rear of Oster because of the times that were uh, uh, together. I think that Oster might have just lifted off the noisy pedal a little bit more than That's Newsom awesome. having a pink lap. I also have to say, Lichtenberg's clock is about four minutes slow. It's actually three minutes slow. I'll be nice. It's three minutes slow, and that really bugged me if you did that <laughs> onboard shot, Lewis. Well, I mean, this is uh, you've got to blame Arjuna, man. Hashtag blame Arjuna for picking those shots, you know. Uh, no, yeah, no, he's not here. It's Lichtenberg. It's Lichtenberg. Yeah, I know, but still, blame Arjuna. The background. The blame no, Arjuna. Anyway. background. That clock is three minutes slow. You can see I haven't got yellow oh, yeah. pen out today, unfortunately. Uh, but <laughs> Lichtenberg probably does not care about any of this. He is currently running in seventh place. We are looking at him. He's behind Jason Brophy, and he's got Robert Malexka three seconds back on the road. I... You know what? There are drivers that love this situation. There's no one behind for a few seconds. You can focus solely on offense, Arjuna. You don't have to worry about playing defense at the same time. Yeah, but I think as well, you're in this situation where you're thinking about that strategy now, right, as well. It's, you know what your teammates are doing around you in the case of all of the teams. 
uh, Team I5G, Lichtenberg will know what, Haring, uh, what Oster and Newsom are doing. Uh, Maletschka will know what Olsen, Van der Sant, Bennett are doing. Uh, Jason Brophy knows what Harrington and Drake and, and Chin and, 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 ev and everyone else is doing, right? You, you have that information. You need to understand it and plot the, the path out from there. And I think that's where the best differentiate themselves. You hear this as well. Like, you look at Sebastian Vettel, right, in Ferrari, the, the, the lo last couple of years there where the less said about Ferrari's strategy team, the better. Sebastian Vettel became his own strategist in some regards. It's not what you want to be doing as a driver, but a good driver has that sense of what's going to work and how to make things happen. And even when these big teams have people behind the scenes doing the numbers, doing the engineering side of things, it, it helps to be able to, to do that yourself. It's now, though, not just an I5G party with Jacob Oster and Alexis Newsom. Jeff Drake, Jason Brophy, Lichtenberg joining the fun. I'm going free on Facebook Live timing in partnership with Timing 71, by the way, to see who has had the longest green flag stint in this race. And I am pretty sure that last stint we saw by Alexis Newsom was it because I've seen a number of 33 lap stints. I haven't seen any 34 lap stints. 23 minutes, 27 seconds. Well, that's stint length there, Lewis. These seem like trivial facts to people who's just watching this broadcast for the first time. Why are we talking about stint lengths? Why are we talking about a driver who's not leading the race? Shouldn't we be focusing on Olsen all the time? Well, yes and no. That's the situation. It's a yes and no situation here because of the fact that this race is as much about thinking your way as it is about racing your way around this race track. Absolutely, strategy is everything. And the reason why we're focusing particularly on this red and white car here, who was Lexus Newsom getting really close to the wall on the exit of T2 is because this car is looking to save a pit stop which would be critical and also got to give a shout out to Jacob Oster who is doing an incredible uh, job as a teammate. Why, when uh, Drake came along, when Brophy came along, basically just let them through because they don't matter. Oster is essentially uh, sacrificing his own race to try and get Alexis Newsom to save those extra, those all important extra few laps of fuel uh, to try and guarantee the team a victory. That, uh, you know, to, to be the sacrificial lamb, is uh, an incredibly selfless task. It is very, very difficult. You, know, you, you kind of have to accept that it's not going to be your name uh, on, the, uh, on the trophy, but it's the team. The team matters more. Your friends matter more. Your teammates matter more. Yep, nice IKEA table. Tell us something there for Jacob Oster. Oh, wow. Currently 15 flow. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, it no, I'm just, I've just noted that we've just got very lucky and had a, a non-caution once more. The caution system oh, on iRacing has become a little bit more lenient, and that is Rob Powers in that team talent mm -hmm. machine that, again, has gone up the track very much like Carl Jansen did, but this time without any assistance in the dirty air of, I believe that was Malechka. And look at the damage on that car, Will. Yeah, that is beyond terminal, shall we say. The question I would ask you at this phase, would you prefer there to have been a caution or not? No. no. I okay. want to see the strategy. I want to see the strategy play out. You want to see the racing, basically. I've also noticed, guys, Alexander Van Sant no longer on the leading lap. That oh, should yeah. be because of his pit stop and the way the sequence is working. Well, no, he had a 20-something second pit stop, as has Joshua Chin. I think, whoa, that's a big old slide as Jeff Drake is into the box. I wonder now if Team Talent and Private Label Team Hype, that combination, will try and work with Connor Harrington, who slides his way into the box, to help him, just like Jacob Oster is doing. Well, uh, Joshua Chin's out of his car in the number eight. He looks as though he's out of his car. Yeah, he's not going to help. Back out. So I was going to say maybe speeding penalty for one, but Josh Chin does not look like he's in his car. Um, we'll have we'll keep an eye out on this one. This is getting interesting, getting very interesting. And these again, we're talking about you know collaboration that's been going on for years and years. This happens when you have the battles between Andretti and Penske and Ganassi at the end of the race. Sometimes they will give out the team orders. It can be a tough pill to swallow. I talked to Sage Caram about this before. When Chip gets on the radio, because don't forget, it's somebody might call that does one of the cars, and they have other people, and Chip gets on the radio and tells you to do something, he's the person that pays for that race car. You will do it, Lewis. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. We've seen uh, plenty of times in motorsport, particularly more so in uh, Formula One, where uh, despite your team uh, boss saying you need to do one thing and then some drivers uh, feel they're above the team and uh, ignore that. Uh, yeah, it happens sometimes. Fair enough. Not naming names, but it, it does happen. Uh, 
but typically speaking, if you're if the big boss is on the phone saying you should probably do that, there's a tip. Do do that. Just go and do that. Here's Phil Kraus into pit lane then, and oh, Kraus. that is speeding. Yeah, big speeding. It's Josh Chin, not Phil Kraus. Josh Chin, yep, yeah, absolutely yeah. same. Purple car. <laughs> a purple and pink car. Lewis is colorblind apparently, is what we're <laughs> yeah, finding out. Apparently here. so. I forgot to I forgot to say something earlier on, Lewis, when we were talking about our journeys to Indy 500. You know what? Should we just like rent a car next year and do Indy ourselves? Screw the rest of everyone else. Uh, yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Well, we're going to drive there from here. We're not going to drive there from here. We're going to go to America and get a car, uh, okay, and then yeah. park the car <laughs> somewhere strategically. <laughs> because um, I, I I got asked by our Juno some top tips about going to the 500. Number one is find a friend who lives somewhere near Speedway. Pay them some money, park the car there, and walk. Because otherwise, you're waiting for three and a half, four hours to get into the venue. Oh, yeah. And that's even if you basically set off at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. That's how many people come in to this race. We are now number 147 of 200 here. And when we get to lap number 150, we're going to run through your top 10, which is letting things cycle through for the moment. Um, we still have, by the way, 24 drivers in this lead kind of pack. Um, we have got now 13 drivers on the lead lap. We have Andreas Eich, uh, Jason Brophy, Alexander van der Sand, Jeff Drake, Robert Melsker, Henry Bennett, Chad Simpson, and Jesper Orman currently oh. scored a lap down, but that will change. And that was a replay of you know, Alexander van der Sand coming onto pit road, Arjuna. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he had a pit lane penalty as well. Not 100% sure, because I would have expected a bit of a longer stop than the 20.8 seconds that he had. But yeah, people are really struggling with that uh, call on, on coming down to the pit lane. One thing to remember as well is worn tires behave very, very differently than fresh tires do on that entry to the box. So it's crucial that you do enough full run so you can practice enough pit stops to understand what's going on. Connor Harrington, by the way, has stayed out on the lead lap after coming down to pit road. But the lap times that he and Hugo Olsen are doing are very, very similar. Harrington might be getting a bit of an undercut on Newsom and Oster. Doesn't seem to be working out to Hugo Wilson. And in the I5G fuel train party that's going on, Alexis Newsom now sits third in line. Beep, beep. I, I love this. The, we've got pit parties, so now we've got fuel train parties to go along with Trilly trains and everything else. Olsen leading then by 15.9, almost 16 seconds over Brandon Lichtenberg. Oster in third place, Newsom in fourth, Christian Steele round out your top five okay it's time to get the notebooks out everyone it's lap number 150 if you've got a pen available i want you all to do this we need to write a name down who are we choosing you want to do it publicly lewis or shall we just write it down oh uh, i mean I, I'm, I'm typically a publicly kind of kind of guy on this this i okay. like to uh to because it's it's more so that i can go back and clip it later and be like look how smart i was okay off you go Boom, Arjuna knows it. Arjuna riding straight on board. I think Alexis Neeson's got this. Okay, Arjuna, about yourself. Uh, I'm going to get in trouble if I don't say Hugo Olsen, but I do think he's in a good spot. If anyone is going to stop him, I think two cars, very interesting on strategy. Alexis Newsom and the other i5G machine, Matt Pavelski, on the same strategy as Alexis Newsom. But I'll go with Olsen. I've written mine in my book. Um, I never say mine because every time I've written one down or said it, they've never won. So I'm not giving that curse. But we are now on lap number 151 of 200 of the 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500 special event. The race that started in 2010 and has seen, well, for almost the first decade, a new winner every year. We're not going to have a four-time winner in Brandon Traino. He won three years on the bounce, 2021, 2020, 2019. He was out of this race on lap number four in what will go down as a very controversial incident. Some people said racing's racing. Other people said maybe it's too early. The thing is, we still have the situation where the driver who sets the fastest time in qualifying doesn't go on to win the race. Philip Kraus is out of this race. He's classified as stop on the timing screen after getting himself a penalty for speeding on pit road earlier in this race. We're looking at your leader behind lap traffic. No blue flag rules in operation here, Lewis. And if you're Olsen, do you save? Do you go? Looks as though there's a little bit of weaving going on down the front stretch. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, I, 
you've, you've got to kind of look at who it is. Uh, at this point, it's Marco Aurelio Brazil, which is someone who is plenty fast enough. Uh, thank you so much. But uh, Hugo Olsen clearly not wanting to save fuel, wants the clean air, not feeling too comfortable behind and going to the inside, going down into four to try and, it is the lead, but try and retake the lead track position-wise, just so he's got all of that clean air out ahead. Yeah. Uh, it does finally get through, but I mean, me, I'd, I'd kind of even be thinking on fuel, but I think uh, Hugo Olsen is committed to a very aggressive strategy. It's one of those things, he will try to defend to stay in the lead lap because there is a massive consequences for doing so. If the caution was to come out and you're in front of the leader, great. Catch back up to the rear of the pack. If you are lapped down, you have to hope that everyone comes on towards pit road to get your lap back. And, of course, that means you don't get to take a service when that caution comes out. The only thing is, I've covered Marco Aurelio Brazil for a long time. That fight isn't over. He's going to try and get back on the lead lap and Olsen onto pit road Arjuna. Thankfully, I think Olsen is thinking, thank goodness, because I know Brazil would try and get back on the lead lap. Yeah, but I think he might have helped out very slightly. The lap times had dropped off for a few moments for, for Hugo Olsen in comparison with Connor Harrington, but now it is closed up once again as Olsen will slide his way into the box. Now, I think Harrington will be in front of Olsen, who is a, always to the right of his stall. I always... I'm intrigued where drivers line up with their stalls. Crucial thing for Olsen is going to be to try and get some friends once more as he rolls from the box. Yeah, at least he was in his stall, not like Brandon Trace last week, who was somewhere in the same zip code, but not quite close enough. I think you said it better, better than I could. As Brendan Lichtenberg takes over the lead of this race, Oster second, Newsom in third, let's there. Going to do a bit of a deep dive into your top 10 as we are now less than 50 laps to go in this race. This is your deep dive into the top 10. We're going to start with Brandon Lichtenberg. And he said it a moment ago, Lewis, or, or one of you said it a moment ago, that they slowed down uh, Brandon Lichtenberg, um, Austin Newsom, to allow this kind of pack to form out. And Lichtenberg is the driver who, to quote your cycling reference, is doing the lead, giving everyone else the draft. Yeah, absolutely, giving that lead out at the moment to Oster, who is in second position, also doing uh, the same thing as well. Uh, just trying to, to give the slipstream to Alexis Newsom and uh, try and hang on. Uh, obviously, the two of them in Lichtenberg, Oster, all trying to assist Newsom right now to go after uh, that race victory. And it's great to see the team working so hard together. Second place is Joseph Oster, uh, Jacob Oster even, in that number 26 car. Four times to a second back, but to be honest, Sergio, these gaps mean nothing for your top four drivers, really. They are in the front trains. We have a look on board with Oster, and picture in picture with Oster. Yeah, I think for now, I think the team swing is now about Newsom. It's about Pavelski. Oster's only two laps longer into the run than Newsom, but two laps might be the difference between spluttering in those final couple of laps versus the likes of Newsom Pavelski he should be a little bit more comfortable. They've got an I5G 1 through 5 right now. Christian Steele's in the, uh, in the mix as well. Pavelski has really had to back it down in order to continue saving the fuel. So he's dropped off the tail end of the group. Lewis talks about the team game, the team mindset as well. We, you said it earlier, only one driver for, will win. I5G named after this track. They've had a historical run of wins here for the last three or four years. They want to carry that forward as they look to try and win once more at the Brickyard. Third place is Alexis Newsom, who is being pulled around this racetrack by Lichtenberg and Oster. Interesting factoid here, um, Luke Lewis. The only time a female driver has ever won a top-level motorsports race was at Twinrin Motegi. Danica Patrick, do you know how she won that race? Fuel mileage. Fuel mileage and a lot of fuel mileage, oh, right. which he did very early on. So, if Newsom does end up winning this race, taking a lot then from Danica. I mean, you know, sometimes uh, it's just how things go in this race. You know that someone's got to uh, win it, whether it's on fuel mileage, whether it's on outright speed. That's the, the, the joy of a race like this for me. Uh, I always, some people aren't, aren't that keen on fuel mileage, and I'll even admit that I never used to be, but the more you kind of watch, the more you understand the little nuances on strategy, and the more you kind of realise there's a lot more at stake. That's, that's kind of the drama, is you're sat here thinking, are they going to make it, are they going to make it? We'll probably find out in about 10 or 15 laps if Newsom can get to, uh, say, 32 to go. 
30, if it's 32 to go, if it's 31 to go, then it's a guarantee. If it's 32 to go, then you're like 99% sure. 33 to go is a little bit more of a question, but should still be fine. Uh, just might have to breathe off the throttle a little bit more than is comfortable. And especially with that chasing pack of Olsen and Harrington behind. They're 20 seconds back at the moment. Where will they be in 40 laps? You know what? I love fuel saving. Fuel saving races on an oval, I love. I do not understand why they set race distances on road and street courses when I had to fuel save the entire time. I actually won my highest um, I-rated race, a top split Monday night race, on fuel mileage. Um, it's, it, it's great if you know how to do it. But you've got in, now in third place, you've got Matt Pavelski in the number 22 car, Arjuna. 8.5 behind the leading duo. Pretty much running all by his lonesome right now. Yeah, he's got some help from some lapped cars and whatnot, but he's a threat, but not as much as Newsom. I think it's very much now with Olsen being about two seconds in front of Connor Harrington and having almost four cars between them in terms of lap traffic. We know how difficult it is once you get three cars in line. Even though they're lapped cars, they're not going to just bop out the way for Connor Harrington. It's looking more and more like it's Hugo Olsen versus Alexis Newsom for the win here at Indy. Yeah, we've got talked about Olsen already, what we're talking about a little bit more on that number four machine, 18 of seconds back years. He's got Connor Harrington about 1.8 seconds back. So that battle we've been talking about before, Lewis, 1.8 seconds, as they still have to, of course, make one more pit stop. Well, everyone does, but they have to make one more longer pit stop, is what I mean. Yeah, that's kind of uh, how it goes. You've, you've got to be... Uh, understanding who is around you and what kind of pits they have to make, whether they have to make one, whether they have to make one and a splash, which could be uh, critical. Uh, just going through some of the stats as well uh, of, of years past uh, and looking at the race winning distance. Uh, I'm not sure if it was, it must have been on a fuel mileage race, might not have been, might have just been on breaking the slipstream stuff. Back in 2016 when Matt Pavelski uh, won, it was the largest winning margin uh, in about the last sort of seven, eight years. Uh, back in 2016, it was a 2.2 second win uh, over Brandon Trainer, almost all of the other ones uh, <laughs> between now and then have been uh, under a tenth of a second. Yeah, and most importantly, it's, they've all been under green. Yeah, exactly. Well, and to jump in very quickly, you're going back to 2017. We watched that in the Q special yesterday. Um, Matt Pavelski, uh, it was a late restart. I think it was four, maybe five to go, Will, and, and it was a um, Pavelski train out. Uh, Q at the front, they got a good launch, but then Traino started fighting with those behind him, and that's yeah. what allowed Pavelski to run away. So when we talk about that being the largest margin that we've seen in the last, you know, five odd years, it, we, it really does emphasize how close this race will be all the way down to the wire, and if we go green, knock on the wood from here, we're getting into that window where you can make it with one stop to go. It might be a dramatic end to this race, in wondering who's got enough fuel, who's going to splutter on the final lap. Yeah, and it can all come down to how you use your gears, how you use the fuel maps. I haven't talked about the fuel maps before, but the fuel maps and how all these different functions of one of the most advanced racing cars in the world all come together. 36 laps to go. I know Lewis is just looking at that lap count to see it come down. Connor Harrington in that number 24 car. We'll talk about him in a moment. So we'll go on board with Alexis Newsom then. That is the perfect kind of draft range to be if you're not going to be doing the swapping of positions. Because right now you're still getting all of the advantage of the slipstream as... Is that Oster on pit yes. road? Yes, it is. And crucially... Which typically has been two laps before, hasn't it? Yes, I don't think Newsom is in a comfortable spot. She'll come in, what, 34 to go? That's asking for a lot. And I, I, you, we brought the yellow pen out tool for the first time today, highlighting where on the dash of the car the drivers can see the fuel maps. A recent update about a year or so ago made the fuel maps much more effective than they have been in the past. I have no doubt Newsom has been in map maybe two, three, or even four, tucked up behind Oster. She is right on the window. That is why it was so important for Brendan Lick to Brogwill to get to the front of the train, give a double toe to Oster and then Newsom. Yeah, so let's keep an eye out then. Every time we come to this shot, it's going to be a case of us again looking at our notes, again looking at the lap counter. We have got 35, 34 to go then in this race. Everyone needs to make a pit stop. How many people still need to do a splash at the end and who can make it to the end? Well, we don't know. 
no one knows, not even the drivers running in this race. What we can tell you, it's been a lot of fun. We still have 26 cars running in this race. Austin Esprit is on pit road many, many laps down, but we have got a total of 26 drivers running in this race. And that is a lot, Lewis. It's going to be 33 to go. It's getting safer every single moment. This number of cars on the track as well may actually prove to be an advantage for Newsom because she might have someone that she can just tuck behind for a lap. Yeah, I mean, that's all she kind of needs to do. At this point, if she pits from here, she should be able to get to the end. Uh, maybe with a little bit of assistance as well, the i5 g bunch surely, uh, if she's in a chance to win, the i5 g bunch will uh, get around and just assist uh, ever so slightly. Uh, we'll see if she comes into the pit lane this time, Byra, if there's been the ability to save a little bit extra fuel. Uh, coming round three and four now, is there going to be the dive off to pit lane? Uh, no, Alexis, she's oh. staying out. Alexis, she's staying out. So that, to me, is a guarantee. This car has enough fuel to get to the chequered flag. Not from do, now, obviously after a pit stop. Do the fuel saving early. It comes and helps you at the end. This could well be the first time I've actually seen this strategy work as well as it has in, well, I mean, I commentated my first iRacing Indy 500 back in 2012. And this is incredible. This is really, really fun to watch right now. We're not just hyping it up for the sake of it. Races like this, don't come along every so often. One caution in this race so far that took place all the way back on lap number four. Newsom is on pit road. A puff of smoke is fine. You always get it. Old tires, you're gonna have to lock those brakes a little bit. Now the next thing you've got to do is come nicely into your pit stall. You can see the number 13, and she comes. Okay. That's good, cars up on the jacks. Now at this point, there are so many people at I5G Lewis who have just breathed the biggest sigh of relief. It's that final pit stop. Anytime you have it, whether it's in an endurance race, whether it's in something like this, that, you know, so any sort of major special event, that final pit stop is where you, uh, your heart is in your mouth and it's not over yet. Remember what happened uh, a bit earlier, you've got to make sure you get this part done as soon as it's back out on the track then you can breathe at least slightly. The really, really hard, the really frantic bit is over and potentially out into the slipstream. It certainly is. Uh, Brendan Lichtenberg, uh, Jacob Oster, that car directly behind. So this honestly has played out perfectly for Alexis Newsom. And now we can say officially we are in the business end of the 2022 iRacing Indianapolis 500 special event here on Racebot TV. Olsen leads away, Harrington second, Brophy third, Drake fourth, Malexa in fifth, Bennett in sixth, Lichtenberg in seventh, Newsom eighth, Austin ninth, Steele in tenth. However, Arjuna, we think only one driver can make it to the end without stopping again. Matt Pavelski's on the bubble, but he's again by himself. Didn't have the assistance of teammates, and that's why his pace has been slow as he's had to do the fuel saving by himself. Newsom should be good. Now the question is, does she need to save just a little bit? Does she back it down very slightly as Jason Brophy comes in for the final time with 29 laps to go? I'll point it out because he'll be delighted that I'm saying this. No pit road errors for Jason Brophy. Have a cookie, <laughs> Jason. He's, a, he's, oh. he, he's known yeah, for he's that. He's still not left his pit lane yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, a commentator's curse, oh, maybe. My. I'm trying to work it out. <laughs> However, oh, Newsom's in a great spot. Hugo Walson has got to find about... 20 just under 20 seconds in these final 29 laps to be in with a shout now again he's likely going to be able to push a little bit harder but the lap times have equalized with newsom out on track with teammate assistance maybe olsen needs to find some teammate assistance as well connor harrington to the lane for the final time and the thing is lewis if it was 34 to go and newsom came on towards pit road We'll be having a very different conversation because you'd have one driver out front, Olsen pushing, 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 and the nervousness. And when you're trying to feel safe when you're nervous, the little flutters of your, of your right foot can make a huge difference. Doing the hard work early means you don't have to worry about that as much as we see a car coming out of pit road. That is Harrison in the number, in the, in the, in the number 24 car. Registered as 13th place then, he is now good to go to the end.
Yeah, and uh, I think they would be having a very different uh, position in this race if our I5G and if Newsom wasn't in such a strong uh, position because I think you might have seen Harrington go a bit longer. I think they're kind of accepting they need to throw something uh, at this to give it a go, to get themselves in position if there is a caution, uh, anything like that. They're trying to basically throw everything at this knowing that Though those i5g cars are so good at the moment, just all locked in. A bit of a little bit of a worry uh, when they came round to let uh, to, to lap Alexander Van der Sant, uh, just sort of sitting in the way ever so slightly. But it was nothing too major. I don't quite know why Kevin and David Oster have lost out so much. Uh, I know it's only a second, but have lost out quite a significant margin over uh, Lichtenberg and Newsom. Yeah, as Malexa and Bennett, we just see them on screen, uh, just going up a little bit as drivers on pit road. That is Jeff Drake, who is on pit road right now. We're, we're looking at Christian's deal at the moment. Right there we are. We've got a replay up here. We're going to talk us through it. Adriano Pinheiro all the way out of the groove, very tight and very loose in the blink of an eye. We've been talking about the importance of in-car tools. I wonder if the Brazilian just got a little behind there. We'll grab a look on board and just watch the hands here, Will. It's a great save once more. We've seen many of them today. Oh, it's so little, the margins at this track. So little. Managed to drop a gear and save it. I tell you what, you could not do that in the IR05. You struggle to do that in the DW12, Arjuna. Yeah, um, it, it's one thing that as well, I think the progression, right, of the, we're what, three years, four years into this uh, IR18 era, you know, it, the drivers have evolved with it, the, the setups have gone through. The car's undergone a whole bunch of changes as well, right, especially on the road courses where we now have tire compounds. Um, it's if you ask me, the best car on iRacing in terms of road course competition is what a lot of the top level uh, competitors in road course racing say as well. On the ovals though, it's still a tricky beast. I've been really impressed at how these drivers have managed to lock it down. Of course it's a tricky beast. They're doing 210 plus miles an hour. I mean, I, I, I drive on the motorways exactly 70 miles an hour, Lewis. Never any faster. And, oh, no, you know, I'm a good boy. Never. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going down the M40, 70 miles an hour. See how that one goes. <laughs> right. uh, but, you know, negotiating the traffic jams, even then, can be a pain in the backside. These drivers are doing three times at like alleged speed. Um, and the key thing is now, 24 to go, it's fatigue. If you're running down in P11, P12, you know you've not got yourself really a big finish coming up it's just those little things it's just like uh, what's my day been thinking about what you might be having for tea later on and before you know it oh high safety barrier yeah i mean to be fair uh, just going back to the point of the m40 i'm pretty sure if you were doing 210 mile an hour in one of these in the m40 still someone would blast past you in a bmw m5 you know what i'm going to say oh wow well yeah when, when you're doing uh, a, a very reasonable speed of 70 and you're still the slowest guy on the motorway there's some problems but either way the race at hand uh, right now uh, kind of being pointed out a little bit by our junior as well that hugo olsen basically just sitting out on the track right now, trying to tick off as many laps leading uh, as, as possible, praying, absolutely praying for a safety car, for a caution, for anything uh, right now. But at this point in the race, I mean, yes, there's commentators curse and all that, but statistically speaking, we would expect one around this point, but the, the further we go into the race, the, the kind of more unlikely it comes. We've only had one safety car this race, it was back on lap five. Yeah. We were, I was going to talk about the biggest disappointment in this race so far, and I think you two can both agree with that. I'll come to you, Arjuna. Biggest disappointment in this race so far happened on lap number four. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to go into the controversy part of it. I'm going to go into the into the part of we lost two really, really entertaining players in this race, and we got a caution. And talking to some of the private label team hype after the qualifying grind came to a close, I got the indication that maybe they had been so focused on qualifying that they hadn't been able to get the car for the race dialed in as maybe as much as they wanted and you always assume that with i5g right they qualified they started qualifying preparations in march of this year they've had several months to build up for this surely they had a good race setup as well would have been interesting phil kraus by far the best uh, gun in the the ba barrel in the gun for the private label team hype brandon trainer michaela costantini one and two in 2021 i wanted to see that battle come on through two of them died on lap four while phil kraus made that mistake on pit road about 35 laps ago it was a decade ago I can tell you, knowing the people that I know who are part of i5G, they are a team that used to do qualifying and race setups in parallel from other teams we've been a part of over the years. It is 
close your eyes, get into the top split, and then after that, you know, oh my word, it's Saturday morning, we should start doing a race setup. Um, and some of these teams, they spend so much time because they have to practicing for qualifying. The race stuff, those little details that we've seen, Lewis, the speeding on pit lane, the not negotiating turn one, turn two on the exit of pit road, all these little bits, they just don't get the time to be practiced. And I do made that point perfectly early. You can't just drop a set of boots onto the car, go out, do three laps, come back in. The tires don't work that way. No, absolutely not. I mean, the thing is, like, doing that a uh, little practice potentially on race side of things and being that literally prepared on race side of things uh, would be okay in split seven, eight, nine, whatever. You know, you, you might be able to get through it. Fair enough. In split one against these, nah, you need to be on, on top form. And like I say, some people might have come into it and just sort of gone, well, we're here, let's just see what we can get. Uh, and other teams have been very well prepared. By the way, just to go back to your uh, point on the uh, drama and stuff, and obviously going back to the thing on lap, lap uh, four or five, uh, obviously we lost two of our fantastic, really top end competitors uh, in the form of Costantini uh, and three time champion Brandon Traino. But I will also counter that with the, we've got a caution which might well have opened the door to the strategy that we have right now. Alexis Newsom wouldn't be on the strategy if it wasn't for that potentially. Uh, maybe she's, who knows. I am quite curious that she's ahead of Lichtenberg though. Well, uh, sorry, I wanted to jump in because I have a disappointment to talk about as well. But Newsom, I think, is good on fuel. She knows that she's got right. fresher tyres than Lichtenberg. Her lap times are greatest. Hugo Olsen's coming into pit. One of the disappointments for me, Will, is the fact that we didn't see more of Valtteri Alander because I really oh, think same. after his run at the end of July in the ISO WC yeah. 500, I think he came ready to win. Yeah, I agree. I must apologise, by the way. I've been saying names wrong all day. It's just my thing. Connor Harrington was the driver I was alluding to earlier on. We don't have a blame Will screen that we can flash on the screen, so we'll just blame Hugo instead. Olsen is on pit road then on the number four car. Big moment of the race, 17 laps to go. Olsen makes an eight second pit stop, his final of the day. The number one car of Andrea oh. Pinheiro is on pit road. What's going on? He almost just lost it there, Will. There was a bump on the exit of pit road. He got very, very sideways. He'll come out in front of Pavelski sitting pretty to get up to second, there's a long way to go. He's about 12 and a half seconds back. You know what? I, I, I never joke about bumps on the exit of pit road because of what happened to Alex Zanardi at the Euro Speedway, but that bump on the exit of pit road, we'll get an onboard look here. You've got the cone, and it's just as you go up a gear as well. That's the worst thing about it sometimes. Hugo Olsen caught all of it, and he just had to make sure that he could keep that car set. You know what? In practice, I've lost Yellow flag! Oh! Oh! Pinheiro! Oh. The race has changed! Oh, my word. Oh 16 my laps to go. Goodness. 16 to laps to go. The thing is, the people that needed to have been at the front of this field when that happened are at the front of the field when that happened. We now have one major question. Yeah. That's the look that I think many people have right now. Yellow flag, Pinheiro coming out of pit road, I assume number one car is back on pit road. So, we had a caution, four laps into this race. We have one with 15 to go in this race. There's one little thing that might happen here, Arjuna. Does anyone take tires? Well, the reality is, you know who's best placed here? It's Hugo Olsen. Everyone else is likely in a situation where they have to come down. But your Robert Malechka, your Henry Bennett, even Alexander Van der Sand, who was one lap down, so maybe not such a factor. But Bennett's on nine lap all tires. Malechka's on eight lap all tires. They have got to play the team game here. They have got to stay out. They've got to help out Hugo Olsen, just like we saw the fuel mileage games with Team I5G. And here's the thing. The lucky thing for Team I5G is you've got drivers at the front of the field between themselves and Hugo Olsen. That could well be the difference maker, Lewis. All that work that they've done together, running and working as a team for the fuel strategy, has put them on the same piece of real estate when they didn't need to fuel save anymore. There's a buffer between Hugo Olsen and the front of the field. That might be the difference maker in not wanting to take tyres, but the big moment of the race is going to happen Quite literally, as this pace car works out of turn number four, pit road is open. I5G look as though they are splitting their strategy, but don't wait just yet. It's like until they actually come onto pit road that it's really going to happen. And indeed, 
They're splitting their strategy, TY5G Lewis. Yeah, way too late on uh, getting in for that second bit, pitling on the exit and just, uh, yeah, binned it. That's the only reason why we've got this caution. But either way, uh, that has happened now. There's no point in uh, crying over spilt milk because someone's got to spill it all over themselves uh, in 14 laps time. For Alexis Newsom, there is, this is not great. This is really, really not great. Hugo Olsen is in a uh, fantastic spot. But... We all know how this racing works. We all know that, yes, it's a classic saying, but cautions be cautions. And it is one of those things that you would expect uh, rolling down maybe into turn one, maybe into roll, roll down to turn three as well. I would expect some drama. It certainly isn't done, but maybe the real advantage is towards Olsen right now. Yeah, I agree. A lot of teamwork is going to go on in these last parts of this race. And you know what, Arjuna? I spent the entire race not talking about that bump on the exit of pit <laughs> road. You mentioned it once, and it almost causes... <laughs> Hey, hey, my power slide teammates will be very delighted if that was a commentator's curse. But I'll talk about this restart. We've only had to talk about it once, right, where we had that lap four restart. Now, there, because we're not going to restart with less than 10 to go, I believe we will restart with 12 or 11 to go. Yeah. There's a car between Newsom and Oster, a further car between Oster and Olsen. Now, Olsen has got the freshest tire by a country mile. Eighth on back of those who have pitted. Olsen's got to make sure he doesn't get hung up. He's got to make sure the i5G machines around him cannot swallow him in a pack and help Alexis Newsom to hold on because we know even with worn tires, the dirty air is a big old factor. Even though right now we're doing pace speed, you do not want to go anywhere for the next, well, let's say 10, 15 minutes. You don't know how long it's going to be. I was about to say as well, at some point, Lewis, that this was going to be one of the fastest Indy 500 top splits we've ever had. We only had one caution. Even with two, it will be one of the fastest that we've had in history. A third caution will take it out of contention. At this stage, though, if you're a team manager, you're doing any of the work on pit road as those lights have gone off on top of the pace car, what do you tell your drivers if you're i5G? What do you tell your drivers if you're power slide? or team hype. Good luck. I think that's all you can tell them. <laughs> this is at the point where we're, we're racing at this, right? As, team, as a team manager, uh, I, I, some like to be very hands-on, some like to be very hands-off. Uh, at a point like this, even if I was a hands-on manager, I would just trust my drivers. That they know what they're doing. I would say, good luck. Uh, ask if you need anything. And then I would step away. Because... There is a thing of like being, you know, too many chefs, too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, we all kind of heard that. Uh, and then being a bit too hands-on. Your drivers know what they're doing. If you're trying to think about, oh, I'll let you through and then you can have that into turn three. Don't overthink it. Just drive it. Just race it and just go with it. The most important person in this field right now could end up being the number 29 car of David Porcel, who is between Alexis Newsom and Jacob Oster. There's a look at the stint lengths or the tyres. You can see Hugo Olsen barely even taking the stickers off. Four laps on his. 22 for Oster, 18 for Alexis Newsom. Well, you wanted a grandstand finish for the 13th running of the R Racing Indianapolis 500. You're going to get one. We're going to have 12 laps of racing to go at the line. We're glad that you can join us. It's only our second restart of the day. Single file restart. The pace car is going to come on towards pit road in the moment. And it will put the field under the command of Alexis Newsom. The number 13 car will have the prerogative when they want to go. As we get a look then towards the start finish line, Barney has the flag in hand. Newsom pick up the pace. We are back to green flag racing here at Indianapolis. And importantly, Oster gets past that number 29 car of Porcel before turn number one, Arjuna. And Olsen did not have the best of launches. Porcelli is now going to get passed by Daniel Ziegler. Both cars fighting one lap down. Here's the momentum from the Swede coming. He's going to get past one. He needs to get past both. Uh, and this could be interesting. Coming down in towards turn number three, you can see the change of the lead there between Oster and Newsom. They are potentially working strategy. Olsen in third, Belvelski in fourth, Brophy in P number five right now. But look at that. There's almost a second gap between Oster, Newsom, and then Olsen. So right now, Newsom and Oster are doing everything 
everything in their power to try and break the toe, but it's not quite gonna happen yet. There's a lot of racing still to go, even though we're down to the last 5% of the racing limits, anything can still happen. They delayed themselves though a bit too much going into one and even into three at the end of the first lap after the restart. And once again, it's a very late move. They are just racing. Uh, Oster side by side with Newsom and retakes the race lead. Obviously, I mean, as much as their teammates and stuff, they're just going at it now. The problem is, is when they're racing as hard as they are, Olsen is just dragging back in. There is no team orders, no assistance happening right now. They are just racing for the crown. I don't blame them, but I'm sat there thinking as an I5G, they're going to be honestly head and hands right now yeah there we are we've got cl people closing right up now and you've got your top three in the same shot Olsen just behind running in third place right now traffic moves out of the way let's give Olsen a clear run towards your top two Austin down to the inside of Newsom as they work through turn number three there's going to be nine laps to go at the line Olsen almost back within half a second of your top two Arjuna and remember the question mark is was Jacob Oster going to be able to make it on field the caution means he's got a chance but he's very much the odd man on strategy compared to those with fuel numbers at least look at the margin as well these top three has by virtue of those lapped cars fighting let's be fair to them they're in their own race but we wanted a grandstand finish we're gonna get that with three cars all in contention 20 yellow plus flag. oh and yellow flags oh. out it changes again because the lap cars oh. will be cycled to the back and the thing is you've also got the situation a heat cycle for Olsen means he won't be necessarily as strong there's the car out of the race Jason Brophy in the number 11 car so, not quite caution speeding cautions, but that last minute panic, that last minute melee of drivers trying to get to the front. And the thing is at this stage, Lewis, you can't, you can't risk it. You can't take tires. Tim Doyle did it once. He got halfway back up, but you were basically gonna have about four laps of racing at the end. Yeah, uh, I mean, you've just got to, to go with what you've got. You've committed to this point. You can't really do anything from now. We'll take a look. There's Brophy uh, looking down the inside, oh. kind of drifts up. Oh, that's a little bit... Uh, it's a lap so car. It. Yeah, it was a lap car. AJ uh, Musselman. Also, I know yeah, Henry Bennett's there uh, on the uh, pit lane. That's uh, again, another driver who's looking for a fourth consecutive something. There's three consecutive top tens coming into this, looking for a fourth, and that is over. You can't blame lap drivers. They were not sent to the rear of the field. That is what procedure and policy is in this race. It only happens with 10 laps to go. And the reason for that is, don't forget, you have the right to race yourself back onto the lead lap in this race. Otherwise, this race could get very boring um, after, you know, 100 or so laps. Um, we don't call it the big one at Indianapolis, but by far the biggest incident we've had here today, involving five cars, a little bit of air, the car taking off them, um, Bassman, of course, was the driver that started this race all the way back in 33rd, Arjuna. Yeah, unfortunate for him. He, another driver making his first top split appearance. Um, at least I think that was Musselman. There are a couple of I, uh, India Alliance cars that have similar paint schemes. I do think it was him. Uh, I think on Jason Brophy's part, he was just really trying to get in front of him because of the closeness that everyone was having, right? It was a very chaotic pack from about fourth on back as they were all fighting and jockeying as they cycled through the traffic. But now I think we're going to restart with five to go, Will. Hugo Olsen finds himself with two i5G cars in front, two i5G machines behind. He has got to get a better restart. Jacob Oster is good on fuel as well. It is an all-out brawl. Will the tires hold on? Will the tires hold on? Will teammates remain teammates? Will people work together? Or is it every person for themselves? We don't know any of this. We don't know what goes on inside the mind of the drivers remaining in this race, Lewis. You know what? That's the reason why I love motorsports. You know, you've had some crazy situations over the years, but each of these drivers at this stage, 190 plus laps of this 500 mile race scored complete. They're thinking, well, I've done this. I'm running in P2, P3, P4, P5. I can still do this. Newsom's thinking I might get some help, but I'm pretty much alone by myself right now. Yeah, anyone that's uh, on the lead lap right now uh, is well in contention for this victory. And of course, they're going to fight for it. The only thing that would really call that uh, is the thing that I think we're all sat here in fear of, which is what if 
we have one more caution. At which point, yeah, we don't want to end this other caution. There's no uh, green white checker or anything like that. If, if we have a caution uh, at the end of lap 200, then that's how the race finishes. Uh, yep. and, and that's just how it goes. We're desperate for that not to happen. Yeah, I am, I am one of the big vocal people to say that this Indianapolis 500 is a 500 mile race. Yeah. I don't want the shenanigans of a green white checker. Okay. But this race, as I said before, has never, Arjuna, finished under yellow. But, you know, cautions breed cautions. I think we have to watch out for that. And I think if you're Hugo Olsen, you have to be very careful as well because it is i5G versus Olsen as it stands right now. Malechka is in sixth, another power slide driver. Uh, you've got Harrington behind. Christian Steele's also got some fresh tires. So I think you've got to be concerned. Uh, you know, we saw three wide on lap four. If you're Hugo Olsen, you make it three wide as soon as you feasibly can. And do remember what rule number one of racing is, Will. Don't wreck your teammate. For Jacob Oster, Alexis Newsom, that's basically the only thing they've got to be thinking about right now, knowing where their tires are. Now, there is also the bit about, you know, all forms of motorsports. Teammates talk to each other. At this racetrack, if you can ordinate your start properly, you can gain yourself a bit of an advantage, Lewis. All the i5G people right now is waiting potentially for a mark from Alexis Newsom as to when they're going to pick up the noisy pedal because that could basically swamp Olsen and make it Team Y5G 1, 2, 3, 4, scrap it out to the end. Olsen's basically going to have to almost be proactive rather than reactive in how he approaches this restart. Oh, absolutely. It has, this has to be the best restart of Hugo Olsen's career right now because you're sandwiched between uh, plenty of i5G drivers. It is an Olsen uh, sandwich with double i5G bread on either side. It's going to be a little bit uh, thick, shall we say. Newsom, uh, Oster, Pavelski and Steele either side. It's not going to be fun, but you've got to nail this restart. It has to be 100%. Pick it up, shall we? We've done over 190 laps of this race. The field is all bunched up behind Alexis Newsom. The 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500 mile race comes down to this. The pace car is going to pull itself down towards pit road. Alexis Newsom will bring the field back to the green flag. Olsen already peeking, looking, waiting for a mark when Alexis Newsom's going to go. It's 5-5G versus Olsen right now. Green flag in the air. We go racing once again. It looks timed well. My I-5G as they come down into turn number one, but Olsen gets a very good second phase of that restart, Lewis. Yeah, it was Christian Steele that was getting a good start in the background. There comes Olsen, though, uh, looking oh! to try and grab that. And he's made a mistake. Oh, oh no, they're up into the barrier. That's Pavelski and Olsen. That's a huge crash again. I'm sure we're going under caution. We might have one lap to go, but that was a big one. That's a shame. So many oh, good cars in that. Pressure. Restart, heat cycles, everything at once. I thought I saw the car just touching the wrong part of the track through turn number two. Oh, yeah, he just ran it too early. Well, yeah, ran that, it too early. That was the issue, Will. He actually, I think, the initial start was quite good for Hugo Olsen in that he wasn't too close. We'll grab a look at this entire sequence as we get back underway for what we were hoping was the final time. But you can see he ha he's back enough that he's going to get, hopefully, get the run out of turn two. But Jacob Oster just slides in front of him, and from there for Hugo Olsen. He's trying to get clean air on the nose as they sweep their way through turn two. He's going low, he's going low, he's going low. He clips the curb. Pavelski's up into him, back onto the track. Malechka gets involved. Olsen slides down, yellow back out. That That's reminds me of 2012 Takuma Sato. In some ways, that reminds me of 2012 Takuma Sato. It was just a little bit of pressure. I don't know. I, I wonder if I'm getting on board with him. That would be really useful. But this will be useful as well. This is on board with Christian. Team I5G car. Okay, here we are. Into turn number two. Now, yeah, he goes way too early. You can see that car's yeah. on the apron, Lewis. Just misjudged it. Obviously, when you've got a car sat in front of you, you know, they're, they're all driving the cockpit. It's not as if they can drive from TV cam or something on iRacing. They're all driving from in the cockpit. I think it was just a misjudgment. Obviously, at this point in the race, you are pushing beyond uh, belief. You are trying to hook it up to just above the apron. Unfortunately, misjudged that. We're going for the biggest, the grandest prize. Maybe didn't have to push it that hard, but 
it's a costly misjudgment, not just for him, but also uh, for his teammate uh, uh, as well, who also had to uh, foot, uh, foot the bill in the form of Malechka. Did also say, by the way, Henry Bennett. Oh, I've ruled him out, by the way, of getting four consecutive top ten finishes. Yeah. Where's he running at the moment? Um, P Henry P9. Bennett is P9. Yeah, yeah you're right. Now, it. I wonder, what, uh, uh, it could have been one of two things, three things, really. A, driver error, Arjuna. B, it could have been heat cycles of the tyres, and you don't quite know when you do two or three heat cycles. It's very hard to simulate that, how your car is going to react after you do a couple of laps, heat cycle in, heat cycle out. Or it could have been something as silly as not having the weight jacket in the right place at the right time. No, I think you, you got it partially right, in my opinion, with he turned in too early. I think part of it was this man, Jacob Oster, you know, turning in and cutting down. I think Hugo was expecting Jacob to run up a groove, you know, getting some clean air onto the nose of that 26 machine. But when Oster came down, Olsen reacted to him. And from there, it was a one-way ticket into the curb, a one-way ticket down to the garage. Yeah, there was once upon a time when they used to actually have proper aprons here at Indy. I would have avoided it. They did say, Penske did say they were thinking about bringing it back, if I remember correctly. They did say they were going to bring about bringing it back. Might have changed the outcome, might not have done. Now, the most important part of this race will happen basically in a few corners time. We need to turn our attention over to the iRacing pace car driver because if the lights go off on top of the safety car, we will get two and a half miles worth of racing. If the lights stay on, we make history in two different ways. The first one is that we're going to have the first ever iRacing top split Indy 500 broadcasted race finish under caution. I'll wait until the pace car comes past the start of finish line to talk about the other one. There are many people right now who might know the answer to this already. We don't quite know necessarily in a TV booth. And I can tell you the lights are off on top of the pace car. We are getting, Lewis, one more lap to go. Oh, if anyone doesn't have goose goosebumps right now, you're watching the wrong thing, mate, because this is... This is going to be a grandstand finish if ever I've seen one. When we talk of how tight margins are coming down towards the line here at the Brickyard, it's always so, so close. That run out of two into three, carrying it all around the short shoot, around four, down towards the line. It is going to be such an intense moment. Uh, some of the drivers uh, will probably sit there thinking, actually, I'm quite happy with my finish right now. I don't want to go for another two and a half miles of racing. Everyone else is like, let's do this and i am in that camp thank you very much i want to see this end under green with a massive race if i remember the rules correctly it might be we might still get a caution to the end but we'll cross that bridge if we come to it there's our field working ourselves down the back straightaway arjuna two corners then we've got two and a half miles of racing <laughs> this race will be over in about 50 seconds i need to get my lungs ready talk for a sec it's a uh, 2020 flashbacks and Tanner Watkins I can see in the YouTube chat thinking oh that didn't end well it's all about the timing of the restart I think Watkins went a little too early in my opinion in 2020 if he had held off a little bit more he could have stuck the momentum up watch as well for Christian Steele to be trying to join the party but i5g have got to be careful Connor Harrington lurks in the private label team hype car but team i5g looking to sweep the podium in back-to-back -back years 2022 i racing indianapolis 500 bar race it comes down to this this car is on pit road alexis newsom has the field under their command jacob oster second christian Steele in third connor harrington in fourth green flag in the air here we go then one more lap around the indianapolis motor speedway and it is oster versus newsom as they work on the exo turn number one Oster already trying to go to the outside through turn number two. We've seen this strategy not work in the past. Christian Steele is going to go right down the middle. As they come down the back straight away, who is going to have the biggest movement into turn three? It's Steele. Steele has the lead from Newsom. And now Oster's going around on the outside. Oster gets past Newsom as they work towards turn number four. Christian Steele in the number 14 car looks as though he is going to come home and win the 2022 iRacing Indianapolis 500. He only led right at the very end, but Christian Steele in the number 14 car is your winner 
of the 2022 iRacing Indianapolis 500 mile race by just over three and a half tenths of a second from Jacob Oster and Alexis Newsom rounds out your top three. Arjuna, what a victory by Christian Steele. Steel put that machine into steely rocket machine mode. I've got a smile on my face, I'm sure. Steel is delighted. Graduated college earlier this year, ready to start his full-time career in the finance world. What a way to enter the world of adulting. Christian Steel, finally a winner at the Brickyard. Indeed, so you could argue massive heartbreak for Alexis Newsom, who has led the majority of the latter part of this race. Well, look at that. TY 5G Lewis showing their respect to one another as they line up towards the yard of bricks. Got to get those pictures just right. Got to allow our race winner to do some donuts. I mean, uh, I remember, uh, Arduino, when we were commentating uh, on that race in Fontana in the ISO WC, and Christian Steele was so dejected uh, after being removed uh, late in that race. By late, I mean the final corner. Uh, to have come round on the final lap, to have made it three wide on the back stretch down into T3, that was absolutely superb. Timing to perfection gave enough room. What a drive, and I can confirm that it definitely wasn't my pick for the win. That was superb. Not my pick either. Not Who my pick yours? either. And he did it through the middle. He did it through the middle. I mean, some would argue into turn three, actually being in the middle could be the easiest way of doing it. Is he going to do the Polish victory lap? I think he's going to give it the old college try, or now the old graduated college try. Not going to make it very far at this rate, though. Oh, what a victory. What a race we've had. Yeah, we had those late race cautions, Lewis, but, you know, it's the, the kind of IndyCar racing I so often see these days. Long green flag periods, the cautions that we happened, they all had a purpose and a reason to them. We had one because of the fact that driver hit that bump on the exit of pit road. That created the first of the number that we had. Then we had the big calamity that happened. Um, and we've also had, of course, we had that incident of Olsen because of the fact that he just, you know, he, he had, he, he's that close. We're talking, I'd say, about six inches between being off the flat and carrying on and the situation he was in. Olsen basically must be so upset right now. Uh, devastated. I, honestly, you're at that point where you kind of, you've, you've had an issue like that, and I'm like, nope, I'm leaving. I don't want to be a part of any of this. Uh, I'm done. I'm done for the day. Goodbye. But you got to feel bad for him. It is what it is. That's the, the thing. We were saying this before, uh, earlier on in the broadcast, that through most of the points, you've got to accept that you're you know, only a few millimetres away from disaster at all points. That's, that's the, the joy of racing at this speed. And that's why winning uh, on such a prestigious racetrack in such a prestigious event is so, so pertinent. And so it, 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 it fills you with joy, which can't even be described. Let's then have a look through your final results from this. The 2022 iRacing Indianapolis 500 mile race. And it's Christian Steele, Team i5G with Apex Racing Team, who claims victory and after the disaster that team had on the fourth lap of this race, they still claim a 1-2-3. You're Jacob Oster in second, Alexis Newsom in third. Connor Harrington in the private label team hype car comes home fourth andreas eek for team talent in p number five and you've got brandon lichtenberg in sixth place the first driver one second back marco radio brazil in p number seven at the end in for the brazilian country jeff drake in eighth place henry bennett in ninth and daniel zegas round out your top ten we go over to page two of our results you got fernando border finishing one lap down. Chad Simpson, also a lap down, as is Thomas Christensen, David Porcelli, Jesper Orman, Joshua Chin, and AJ Musselman. Two laps down is Alexander Russell. Then you've got Matt Pavelski, four laps down, as is Robert Melska, involved in that incident, of course, that we saw with about five laps to go. Hugo Olsen, well, we talked about it. It was a matter of inches. He was a driver that initiated that final caution, Power Slide Motorsports. He finishes four laps down. Valtteri Alanda, Pacova Esports, five laps down. Then you've got Rob Powers in 23rd, Jason Brophy in 24th, Alexander Van der Sands in 25th, Andrew Pinheiro, 26th. 
Austin Esperti in 27th, Philip Kraus, who had that speeding penalty, put him out of the race in 28th, Carl Janssen 29th, and Rodrigo Franzoni rounds out your top 30. The final three of our results, Will Leon in 31st, Brandon Trainer, Michelle Constantini. Well, the less to say about that, the less they're gonna get angry at me. Like number four. Well, there we are. That was, that was an incredible, incredible race we have. So, driver interviews coming up any moment, but before we do that, let's have a quick chat, Arjuna. Let's say, this was, again, one of those races where it offered a lot, it delivered a lot. And I don't really know, looking at the finish in particular, I don't really know what Newsom or Oster could have done. The run that Steele had, the fresh tyres, propelled him forward. You've got to feel for Alexis Newsom though. We went green for a good 170 something laps. If that race goes green, Alexis Newsom has it in her back pocket. She becomes the first female winner of this feature race in the iRacing Indianapolis 500. But ultimately, Team i5G, they named themselves after this race, after the Brickyard. There's a reason why that's the case. Yeah, and Lewis, it could well have been if those lights stayed on the safety car, as I said, we could have been talking about history in two different ways. That's the nature of the track. The track giveth, the track taketh away. I mean, that's what happens when you take part in a special event like this. You accept the risks, you understand what you're playing for, what's at stake. That's part of the fun. That's what makes this uh, better than just doing a, a standard race by yourself, where it's just kind of like, oh, well, do you know what, whatever. If I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. It, when you're taking part in something like this, it means so much more. Uh, and that is the victory as well as the heartbreak. The heartbreak is a part of it. You know, you've got to take the highs, you've got to take the lows. It all builds up. And I'm sure that Alexis Newton, based on that, will come back just as strong next year. Because the strategy, it was there. The pace, it was there just didn't happen today yeah and by the way if you've never been to the uh, to the indianapolis 500 and you get the opportunity do do so the first year i was there was when the pacers back when they were still good were scrapping it out with the heat and it was great to see them battling out together but the atmosphere the emotions of this racetrack try to leave by 2 30 if you're under the age of if you're over the age of 25 um, on Friday because it gets messy but the rest of the weekend absolutely a load of fun there we are again Christian Steele he's your winner and the team i5g with ART team Christian congratulations first questions first what milk are you drinking in a bit um 100% fully fat um because so basically the joke is that we had like they called it the cheese so um it was essentially like we we had our light cheese which is when we were starting with qualifying you know the first couple of days and then as we as we wicked it up we went to the fully fat cheese so um i'm gonna i'm gonna go uh whole milk uh for this occasion love it, love it. talk us to the race because it had one of those long green flag runs that you've had so many times in iRacing in this big race. How were you able to negotiate the car over that long stint and keep yourself competitive? Um, this is this is probably going to make some people mad, but I had like honestly barely any practice with the race trim. It's just been the amount of, of laps that I've run um, throughout like these past eight or nine years and just I knew that you know Brandon, Alexis, and and um, everyone up on our team. They they had the the pace, and I, I was texting Matt, who won in 2016. Um, you know, like we weren't gonna win on pace, but you know we had to find a way to win, and um, you know that's that's what we had to come out here and do today. And I was just prepared to do that. Talk us through that last lap. The last lap, you had three i5 G cars in the top three, coming to the restart, all with slightly different tyre lengths, sorry, tyre stint lengths, so to say. You knew that Alexis was on the oldest tyres of the lot. Did that factor into your move down on the back stretch? Um, honestly, I by around lap 80, I, I was basically, that was my strategy. I knew that I wasn't going to make it on fuel and I wasn't going to make it on raw pace. So my, my strategy was to go as fast as I can when I could and have the tires in hopes of a caution um, and just kind of have the strategy as open as I could 
to uh, make it happen. So when I when I knew Alexis and, and Jacob were on older tires, I knew, I knew that the my turn two was my shot, and you know I just went for it. I was ridiculously high on the weight jacker, and you know I was either gonna come out with a great run or spin. Like that's you know the matter of it. So. Well, congratulations on your victory. Christian Steele, he's off to drink himself with some full fat milk. And Lewis, he seems rather happy with his you? I mean, uh, do, do you blame him? Uh, for real, I, I'd be over the moon. I wouldn't have even come for an interview. I'd have been off to drink my milk straight away. <laughs> I, mean, I'm not, I don't have time for this. I've got to go and celebrate. Uh, We've had that again, a couple of years ago. Congrats. <laughs> we had that a couple of years ago. Sometimes it's a good idea we don't do video interviews. But we've got another <laughs> interview. We've got Jacob Oster coming home second in this race. He is um, in his chair. <laughs> it's been a race of almost maybes and everything in between in this race, Jed Cobb. You've had the opportunity to almost win it. You've had the opportunity where things are going wrong. You come home second and talk us through the emotions. Um, it, it, it's kind of hard to put in the words because this race started off in a really, really bad way for two of my teammates. And eventually that caution there turned into good things for me and Alexis. And we were in a spot to get an easy one too at the end of that race. He drove an absolutely incredible race there. Um, she, he got it, and then the, these cautions at the end really kind of screwed us up a little bit. Steel, we knew he pitted, and we were really worried about Hugo at first. And we had a caution before, with five to go, and we were like, well, it's a one-lap shootout, and I knew Steel was there, and I wasn't trying my best to get around Alexis before turn three, but Steel just found a gap, went through it, and we came home one, two, three. That's all that matters, really. You talk a lot about the team there, and after you know what happened on lap four of this race, it's been a massive turnaround for you, claiming and keeping the the kind of vision of this team that has been so successful at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway over the years. How do you feel to be a part of that? It, it's it's honestly incredible to have this group of guys and now a girl to go around and go around this track and just know what to do in almost every single situation and to figure out what to do if any situation appears. It's good to have that support group. It's honestly incredible. I've never had that really anywhere, especially in sim racing, not really in life a lot. To have that to where you say, okay, you get down, people pick you back up, you go, you go back, drive through the field, get yourself a win, get yourself a top two, top three. To have people to tell you to stay calm, do what you need to, it's honestly incredible. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, Jacob. Second place here today in the i5G car. And very quickly, Arjuna, you've got to think about this from a team perspective. You know, they got a one, two, three. After, you know, lap five of this race, it looked to be a completely different story. But we heard it from Traino and we spoke to him, Will. Full focus went on helping his teammates, making sure that we, uh, rather that they were able to work to the front. Uh, it was looking like they were wa waltzing their way with the strategy in Alexis Newsom, but ultimately it was a three wide moment and a three wide finish for Team I5G. Talking about Alexis Newsom, we are going to be joined by Alexis now, and you were in pole position to claim this race with about 15 laps to go, and then it all started to move away from you. How do you feel at the end of this one, coming third for I5G? Yeah, I'm, I'm in on my goal, so it's kind of hard to be disappointed, but, but after being that close, I mean, at least one of my teammates got it could got steel but i mean <laughs> i am kind of disappointed i gotta be honest you've come so close you've shown a lot of people just how you not only belong in this car, you belong in this big race um how do you feel about taking the rest of this year in terms of indycar building up to pretty much this day in 364 days time oh yeah it makes me look forward to the next one a lot more like uh, knowing that I can actually, actually come that close to winning. So <laughs> it makes me a lot more excited for next year. Well, thank you very much. Alexis Newsom then coming home third place. And as I said, wrapping up a team I5G one, two, three. I, have, I never know if we're going back to camera or not at this point. So I'm going to carry on talking. Um, final thoughts before we say good, our goodbyes, Lewis. It's been another fantastic iRacing Indy 500. The tradition of finishing under green remains. And my word, that final lap had everything going for it. 
I mean, it's a classic Indy 500 finish. It's just drama, drama, drama. Uh, it was a pretty calm race through the middle. It suddenly picked up towards the end, courtesy of a few cautions. And for me, uh, my first Indy 500 here in the comms booth, uh, at least of the official ones. Of course, we did the ISOWC, but I tried to forget all the time I spend with our junior in the commentary booth. But this one uh, was a lot of fun. I, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, maybe uh, maybe I'd come back to irritate the lot of you again one time. Ah, you're always welcome, I say. We'll do Indy <laughs> next year. Our journalist going this year. We'll go and do it properly next year. If he follows my tips, you might be okay, Arjuna. I'm looking forward to it. I've got to commentate on this race now the last two years. Can't wait to see what the real one is all about. Of course, there's weather things that might play a bit of a factor. You got the hat as well. It's always an exciting yeah, time. The virtual month of May comes to a close, but we focus on the real world, the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500 in just over a week's time. Yeah, and with that, folks, we're going to say thank you very much for being a part of our broadcast here today on Racebot TV. It came down to the final lap once again. Indy always has a way. The virtual Indy always has a way of giving us something that we will remember for 364 days. Today, it was Christian Steele's day. Jacob Oster, Alexis Newsom came close, as did so many others throughout the course of the day. Whilst Brandon Traino may not become a four-time champion here, he must be happy that at least one of his teammates was able to do so for Team i5G, of course, in partnership with the Apex Racing Team. And with that, we say thank you very much for being a part of our coverage today. Thank you very much to iRacing for their continued support of this, the iRacing Indianapolis 500. Head over to iRacing.com membership right now, where you can save a 40% off new membership. Thank you very much to the entire Racebot TV team, of course, too. My two commentary partners here today are Juna Kankapati and Lewis McLean. The 106th running of the iRacing Indian of the Indianapolis 500 will of course be on NBC next weekend, Sky Sports in the UK. But for now, as we see the city of Indianapolis in the background, we say thank you for watching and good night from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway.